Chapter 741, Familiar Feeling The strange feeling from the back of his neck grew stronger. Shin Ji-Yi's eyes moved away from the mirror and slowly turned around to look behind him. Hair skidded across the tip of his nose. Shin Gu was greeted by a scarred face and a pair of eyes filled with venom. An upside-down man was standing behind Shin Gu, staring at Shin Gu with his inverted facial features. Inside the haunted toilet, a man was attracted by the strange mirror before him, then he felt something strange on the back of his neck. He turned around and saw this inverted face staring at him. No matter who it was, they would definitely be spooked by this experience. Chu Chang Lin, who was hiding inside the toilet, had his ears perked up, ready to feast on the visitor's scream, but he waited for a long time, but all he heard was an eerie silence. A gap broke open next to the edge of the mirror. Using the lamp in the corner of the toilet, Chu Chang Lin could roughly make out a figure in the dark. He was tall with one hand stuck inside his pocket and the other holding an old backpack. Time seemed to have frozen. After who knew how long, Chu Chang Lin saw the man slowly raised his hand. Just as he thought that the man was about to clamp his hand over his lips to stop himself from screaming, the man's palm reached toward the face hanging behind him. It's just a mannequin? This is strange. How could a mannequin possess such a despairing gaze? the man mumbled to himself. He seemed to be deeply attracted by something. He put down his backpack and used both of his hands to carefully examine the skull that was hanging upside down. The finger caressed the mannequin's cheeks almost lovingly before traveling to its eyes and lashes. Seeing this, Chu Chang Lin, who was hiding behind the mirror, felt a chill run through his body. Various scary thoughts filled his mind and the hand that was holding the remote was already drenched with sweat. Chingu examined the mannequin's eyelashes. When he first laid eyes on the mannequin, he had already been mightily impressed. It was completely different from the mannequins available on the market, and it was even different from the mannequins at his own haunted house. This mannequin was mixed with the creator's emotions, and each detail was perfect. With the skill of mortician's makeup and dollmaker's talent, the mannequins, created by Chin Ji's hands, had the most realistic appearance, but even so, the mannequins could only be seen as the perfect vessel. Without the control of his employees, they would appear rather lifeless. As for this mannequin that fell from the ceiling, even though due to material restrictions, the realism was not comparable to Chin Ji's mannequins, the eyes were so lively. He uses very common materials, so how did manage to create such a lively pair of eyes? Just how many pairs of eyes has the creator observed to be able to come up with something like this? Chen Go held the mannequin's head carefully. He did not think that it was that scary. If anything, there was an admiration rolling in his eyes. I'll need to create a lot of mannequins, and that is such a big workload for one person. In the future, as the number of scenarios increases, the number of mannequins needed will shoot up as well. I will need to find an assistant. This person's talent is not bad. With some training, I'm sure they'll be a valuable addition to the haunted house. Chen Ji's brain turned very fast. Even when he was standing alone in the toilet, holding a mannequin's head, he was still thinking about his own haunted house. To have talent like this stay inside the toilet to scare others is such a waste. Chin Go let go of the mannequin, and the latter swung lazily before the cubicle. Chin Go walked to the fifth cubicle. Is someone inside? He did not know what kind of impression he would have given the worker hiding in the dark. In any case, Chin Go did not care, he merely wanted to find the mannequin's creator. Where are you? Are you playing hide and seek with me? Chin Gu sounded weirdly excited, like a child discovering a new toy. In this strange environment, hearing Chin Ji's voice, the hiding Chu Chang Lin felt his heart quivering. He even suspected that the shock had been too much, and the visitor had gone insane. The sound of knocking came from the fifth cubicle. Hearing that, Chu Chang Lin's heart started to race. For some weird reason, in that moment, it felt like the role of the hunter and the hunted had swapped. The person hiding in the secret room was the victim, and the man wandering outside stubbornly was the real culprit. If you're not going to open the door, 
then I'm coming in, okay? Even though it was phrased like a question, Chu Chang Lin did not hear any hesitation from the speaker. Bang! The door of the fifth cubicle was pushed open, and Chen Go looked in with some disappointment. Then everything should be inside the last cubicle. He walked to the door of the last cubicle, but Chen Go did not stride in directly. He leaned against the door to listen for any sound coming from inside the cubicle. Timing was crucial to activate traps inside the haunted house, so there had to be at least one employee handling one scenario, because not everything could be controlled remotely. Chen Go looked around. This place is only so big. Where could he be hiding? The last cubicle should contain some scares as well, but if I was the employee, I wouldn't pick to hide there. Adopting the worker's perspective to view this problem, Chinga suddenly lifted his head to look at the crack in the ceiling where the mannequin dangled from. Is the worker hiding in the ceiling? A brave idea popped up in Chin Ji's mind. He walked to stand beside the mannequin and looked at the hole above him. Someone has to be controlling the mannequin. I wonder, where will the lines connected to the mannequin lead me? The monsters and ghosts that other people avoided were openings for Chen Gu. He stood beside the mannequin and thought for a while. Chu Chan Lin, who was behind the mirror, had his heart gripped by a vice. He had no idea what the man was going to do next. Chen Gu walked back to the cubicle and summoned Ol Zhou after taking out the comic from his backpack. He pointed at the hole in the ceiling, and Ol Zhou nodded. Chen Gu kept knocking on the door of the last cubicle, and while the employee's attention was thus distracted, Ol Zhou sneaked into the hole in the ceiling. For Chu Chang Lin, this was incredibly strange. The sound of knocking kept coming, but he could not see anyone. What is he doing? Chu Chang Lin held the remote with both hands. Sweat slid down his face, and the constant knocking annoyed him. The torture lasted for a minute before it got the better of Chu Chang Lin. Either you come in here, or you get out. Who are you trying to scare by wasting your time here? He pushed the door open a gap, wishing to confirm Chin Ji's location. But at that moment, he felt something brush against the back of his neck like a centipede crawling over it. He scratched behind it, and his fingertip touched something that felt like a ball of water grass. Subconsciously, Chu Chang Lin turned to look behind him. A pale face, with an upside-down smile, was hanging behind him. Found you. Chapter 742 When you try to mix with others, it only makes you look more alone Chu Chang Lin had worked at Nightmare Academy for three years, and he had never expected such a day to ever come. The face was only a few centimeters away from him, and he could see every detail on it clearly, including the corner of the lips that was curved upward, the stubbles that needed a quick shave, and the eyes that were radiating iciness no matter where they looked. My boss wants to meet you. The man's lips opened and closed. It looked like he was speaking, but Chu Chang Lin did not think that he could hear anything. Perhaps the nurse responsible for auditory stimuli had stopped working, or perhaps his whole brain had gone into shutdown. This was no longer that important. It did not even cross Chu Changlin's mind to understand why there was someone hanging behind him. His heart returned to normal after two seconds. Blood rushed to his brain instantly, and as he regained control of his body, Chu Changlin reacted the way most normal people would. Who's there? His voice shook. Chu Changlin rammed into the door before him, and the thin mirror was pushed open. He wished to run out, but the door of the fourth cubicle was locked by someone. Trapped inside the cramped space, Chu Chang Lin leaned against the door of the cubicle. His eyes were glued to the secret room where he had been hiding earlier. There was nothing inside the narrow space. Chu Chang Lin had his hands on his chest, certain that he had seen someone there earlier. His head had been dangling downward, and he had been hanging behind him. Where did he go? The scene from earlier had become an emotional scar in Chu Changlin's heart. If he did not get to the bottom of this, he believed that he would never have the courage to stay inside any dark, small spaces again. The air conditioning in the haunted house blew. The temperature was very low, but sweat kept pouring down Chu Changlin's forehead. The cubicle door is closed, so the visitor should still be here. 
Misery loved company. Just as Chu Chang Lin was contemplating this serious question, there suddenly came a knock from the cubicle door behind him. The banging on the door was like a note from hell. It held a unique rhythm, and the constant knocking felt like it landed on Chu Chang Lin's heart. He wanted to move, but his legs refused to listen to his orders. They turned into noodles and failed to support his body anymore. The man slid down the wall. An extra person somehow appeared in the secret room. He wished to run out, but the cubicle door would not open. Chu Chang Lin realized that he was trapped in a corner. He stomped on the ground as he struggled to stand up. If it is the visitor who is knocking on the cubicle door, then who was the person that I encountered inside the secret room? Chu Chang Lin leaned heavily against the cubicle door. He reached into his pocket, attempting to find his phone and report the situation to his boss. However, just as he started to dial the number, before he even had the chance to say anything, he heard a completely unfamiliar voice. It's useless even if you try to hide. He will follow you home, hiding inside your shadow, leaning in from your window, lying in wait underneath your bed. The voice came from outside the cubicle, from the person who had been knocking constantly on the door. The man did not purposely use a scary voice to scare Chu Chang Lin. Rather, the man's voice was level, like he was merely describing the truth. Chu Chang Lin clamped his hands over his lips. The call was already connected, but he did not dare to speak. He could see a cold gaze looking at him, but he did not dare turn back, did not dare move a muscle, it was as if his whole body was frozen. What should I do now? Chen Gu was leaning over the wall of the fifth cubicle. He looked down at Chu Chang Lin, who was curled into a ball on the ground, and his eyes were burning with admiration. He can stay inside this toilet with a horrible stench for so long even without wearing a mask. Professional etiquette aside, his professional skill is at least 80 marks. With one hand on the wall, Chen Ji's other hand was holding the mannequin that dangled from the ceiling, and he shook it constantly. The knocking sound that Chu Chang Lin had heard was actually the sound of the mannequin's head banging against the door. The sound of a head banging against the door was naturally different from when one used one's hands. Without the man knowing about it, Chen Gu was conducting a simple test on Chu Chang Lin. Good ability, very professional. The only thing left is his personality and morality. When Chen Gu was contemplating that question, Ol Zhou silently materialized behind him. He was holding a thick notebook about human anatomy. What's this? As Chen Gu flipped through the notebook, he found that it was filled with pages of hand-drawn mannequin blueprints. They ranged from various styles and models. According to the clues, there is a spare red table lamp in the haunted house. I found this notebook underneath that lamp. It doesn't seem like he wants people to see this. Ol Zhou had spent quite a bit of time with Chen Gu, so he knew his boss very well and would sometimes prove to be quite astute and caring. Hearing Ol Zhou's words, the image of Chu Chang Lin in a ghost outfit hiding inside the toilet where visitors would rarely enter appeared in Chen Ji's mind. Out of boredom, he used the light from the table lamp and studied the profession of mannequin making. The front part of the notebook was mostly hand-drawn designs by Chu Chang Lin himself, but the latter part felt more like his diary. September 1, the number of visitors coming to the haunted house continues to drop. I can hear people walk past the door, but no one comes in. Sad. September 3, I've updated the mannequin in the toilet. I only need to spend an extra 50 RMB on each mannequin, and they will bring a realistic feeling to the visitors. I'm sure everyone will be impressed, September 4th, the cold drizzle washed out my face. Boss didn't agree with my update idea. Oh well, the haunted house is not doing so well, this is not his fault. September 15th, a visitor finally wandered into the toilet today. Let me think, how shall I scare him? Ha 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 ha, September 30th, Xiao Dai said that she wishes to focus on her career at the moment and has no time for a relationship. I will need to work harder so that I can support her in the future. October 15, why do they always say that I'm a boring person? I've done so many things that I didn't like so that I won't stand out anymore, 
but how can they still see me as a strange guy? October 30th, so Xiao Dai already has a crush. November 1st, a new month has begun. I swear to become a more interesting person that can get well with others. Yes, you can do it. There were many other similar short entries. Each one of them sounded optimistic, but Chen Gu could sense the melancholy behind it. He put down the notebook, and his eyes wandered to the words on the walls of the fifth cubicle. Unlike the third sick hall, the scenario was decorated by their corresponding workers. Chu Chang Lin was responsible for the toilet, so the words on the walls should have been handwritten by the man. The ghost story in the toilet was about a boy by the name of Xiao Lin. He was hated by everyone due to his prankster nature. In the end, everyone decided to gang up against him. It was a simple story, but it reflected Chu Chang Lin's life. The Xiao Lin in the story should be talking about him. Not all fish stay in the same ocean, so why push for things against nature? Chin Gu thought about it and decided to stop messing with Chu Chang Lin. He called Ol Zhou to return to the comic, and he pulled open the door of the fourth cubicle. Chapter 743 When you bloom after forcing the cubicle door open, Chin Gu immediately squatted down when he saw Chu Chang Lin collapsed on the ground. Are you all right? Seeing the man enter, Chu Changlin's first reaction was not to ask for help, but to try and retreat as fast as he could. He held both of his hands over his face, like if he could not see anything, the monster outside the door would not exist. What's wrong? Are you hurt? Do you need me to call the emergency number? Chen Jie's voice was laced with concern. In Chu Changlin's memory, ghosts would not ask questions like that. The fingers that shielded his face opened a slight gap, and Chu Chang Lin peered at Chen Gu through it. It was a common, honest face with concern in the eyes. How could someone like that be a bad guy? Chu Chang Lin gradually put down his hands. He was about to ask Chen Gu for help when he was suddenly reminded of something. After he was scared by the hanging man inside the secret room, there came a constant knocking from the door of the fourth cubicle which meant that there should be a second ghost prowling the scenario. Suppressing the anxiety in his heart, Chu Chang Lin tried his best to calm down, but when he spoke, his voice was still shaking. Did you hear some kind of weird knocking earlier? It had a constant rhythm and sounded completely different from a normal knocking sound. A knocking sound? Chen Gu scrunched up his brows before relaxing them. I think I know. You probably heard this. Taking one step back, Chin Gu grabbed the mannequin that was dangling in midair. He nudged it slightly, and the mannequin's head bounced into the door again and again. When I came in, I saw this mannequin swinging back and forth. Its head was bouncing against the door, which is probably what you heard. After hearing Chin Ji's explanation, Chu Chang Lin fell into deep contemplation. The knocking definitely did come from the mannequin, but now, there was another question in his mind. He found Chin Ji's voice suspiciously familiar. When the ghost threatened him earlier, it was this voice that had spoken to him. Let's get out of here first, this place smells. Chin Gu reached out to grab Chu Changlin's arm, trying to help him get up. Don't come near me. He swung Chin Ji's hand away and sat between the cubicle and the secret room. Why? What are you so afraid of, or are you still acting? Then, what shall I do to cooperate? To ease the pressure on Chu Chang Lin, Chen Gu moved out of the way and allowed the former a free route toward the exit. Acting? Chu Chang Lin lay on the ground for almost a full minute before he calmed down. After confirming that Chen Gu did not mean him harm, he slowly let his guard down. Are you one of the visitors? What do you think? Could I be one of the workers here and you're the visitor? Chen Gu attempted a joke, but the way he looked at Chu Chang Lin was like how one would appreciate a piece of moving art. Chu Chang Lin tried to stand up by pushing both hands against the ground, but he failed. He was about to try it again, but he suddenly realized how preposterous that would have appeared to the visitor. To preserve his own pride as the haunted house's worker, Chu Chang Lin coughed drilly and said in an unnatural tone, That's right. You're lucky enough to have found the hidden plot inside this scenario. I am the key character at this scenario. 
Unfortunately, I'm currently injured by a spirit, and I need you to help move me to the headmaster's office. You're the key character here? But according to the entry I read in the diary and the words written on the walls, shouldn't the main character that this scenario is based on be called Shaolin? Chen Gu was not purposely trying to make Chu Chonglin look bad, he was merely curious about everything. Haha, actually, I am that Shaolin, Chu Chonglin admitted shyly. But the Shaolin in the story is only a child, whereas you look almost 30 already. At least the hair on your head points toward that. You. Chu Chonglin had just experienced the scare of his life, and he was still recovering. That, combined with his natural reticence, meant that he did not know how to respond to Chen Gu. In any case, you need to rest. The headmaster's office, is it? Okay, I'll take you there. Chen Gu gripped Chu Chonglin's arm. Can you stand up? Chu Chonglin held the wall as he stood up. His legs were weak, and he tittered like a toddler learning how to walk for the first time. Aren't you a bit too in character? Chen Gu then proceeded to do something that surprised even Chu Chonglin. He picked Chu Chonglin up on his back. Lead the way then. Okay. Chu Chonglin did not know how to feel. Just minutes earlier, he had received a message from his boss telling him to scare this visitor, but several minutes later, he was being rescued by the same visitor. The phone in his pocket vibrated several times. Chu Chonglin silently took it out. His call to the boss had already disconnected. The phone was filled with messages from his boss. What are you doing? I told you to go scare him, not to reform him. Where's the modified mannequin that you often boast about? Didn't you tell me you placed multiple traps inside the toilet and could scare even the boldest of individuals? Why are you climbing on his back now? Reading the messages on his phone, the bitterness in Chu Changlin's heart grew. He did not like to speak and was not good at maintaining interpersonal relationship. He really did not know how to answer his own boss now. His boss continued to message him, but Chu Chonglin stopped looking at them. Helplessness and worry overwhelmed him. He felt like a failure, and his head sunk even lower. This haunted house is quite scary. When I entered the toilet earlier, I was given quite a fright by the mannequin that dropped down from the ceiling. Especially, the mannequin's pair of eyes, they look so real. The creator must be a genius. Chinga made it sound like this observation was made casually. You think that mannequin is scary? Chu Changlin's lowered head slowly lifted. I've been to many haunted houses, and this was the first time that I've been scared by a mannequin. The creator must be a genius, and he must have spent a great load of time studying this. The design of the toilet is quite amazing as well. The visitor knows that there will be a scare inside the fourth cubicle, so when they open the door, their attention is attracted to the mirror. So, when the mannequin suddenly drops down from the ceiling then, it creates such a scary effect. This is an ingenious design. Chen Gu was sincere with his praise. Hearing the compliment, color returned to Chu Changlin's eyes. Actually, there are seven traps in total hidden inside the toilet. This time, there was an accident, and only one was triggered. That's impressive. Even with just one trap triggered, this is already one of the scariest experiences that I've had inside a haunted house, but the story behind it annoys me somewhat. Like he was talking to a friend, Chin Ji's tone was friendly and natural. The story? I think it's fine. I got the gist after reading the diary entries and the words on the walls. Shaolin is a child that no one pays much attention to. No one wants to be his friend, so he tries to get other people's attention by playing pranks, but in the end, everyone in the class gained up on him. Is there a problem with that story? No, the story is fine, but I personally feel like Shaolin's tragedy could have been easily avoided. On the surface, Chen Gu was discussing Shaolin's story with Chu Changlin, but he was actually sharing some of his personal thoughts. When a person tries to mix in with the rest, he will only make his life that much more tiring. To give up on one's hobbies and habits just to pander to others is truly a sad life. Chu Changlin nodded slightly but did not respond. 
Chen Gu did not mind it and continued talking. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I've wandered too far from the topic. Actually, it's because I see my past self in Shaolin. Like him, I used to be alone and afraid, my goal in life was to make friends with everyone. Eventually, I confessed my feeling to a girl whom I had a crush on, but she rejected me. Chu Chong Lin listened to Chen Ji's experience and found resonance without even realizing it. It must have felt awful to be rejected. Naturally, the pain stuck with me for a long time. During that period, I tried my best to stand tall again, but only those who have experienced this will be able to understand how difficult that really is. Chen Gu practically took the words out of Chu Changling's mind, and the latter found himself nodding along. Relationships are something that is very hard to explain. One day, I overheard a conversation between my friends. The girl that I had a crush on actually hated how I always tried to pander to others. At that moment, I understood, I needed to rediscover my true self. A melancholy, not reflected by his age, coursed through Chen Ji's voice. I moved to a new company and started a new life. I stopped trying to live my life for other people's sake. I gave my new life and new job my best, trying to become my best self. Now, I am successful both career-wise and relationship-wise. I am even my own boss, and I don't need to care about pandering to others anymore. Just hearing Chinga say that, Chu Chong Lin felt rather jealous, and he breathed out sincerely, you are an amazing person. It's not me that's amazing. If one is willing to change, anyone can be that amazing, including the Shaolin in the story. Chen Gu stressed on the word change. Everyone is their own main character. What we need to do is to spend time and effort on things that can make us truer to our real self. Chen Ji's words left such an impression on Chu Chang Lin that his eyes were glistening. Brother, actually, I have a similar experience to yours. I did have a crush on a girl, but now, I'm a bit lost. There's no need to be lost, just remember this. Without raising his head, Chen Gu moved past the door of the storage room where Xiao Dai Wan should be. Be your best self. When you bloom, the butterfly will come. Chapter 744, Stairs Chen Ji's words hit the softest part of Chu Changling's heart, and a seed started to germinate there. The encouragement from this stranger formed a stark contrast to the messages from his boss, and the bitterness that had been hidden inside his heart for years finally exploded. It's about time for a change. This thought expanded in his mind at an uncontrollable speed. He clenched his fists tightly, but after a while, he slowly calmed down. Life was not a fairy tale, the premise of living one's dream was to first stay alive. Chu Chong Lin was isolated by the workers at Nightmare Academy, which was why he had been arranged to monitor the toilet with its repulsive stench. He was bad at interpersonal relationships and lacked confidence in himself. Being reminded of those facts, he sighed softly. I wish to change, but change needs courage and ability, and I have neither of those. You underestimate yourself too much. Even though we don't know each other, I can already see several positive points about you. Perhaps you simply haven't met someone who knows how to appreciate your talent. The scenario you're responsible for is so scary, and the mannequin inside it is horrifying, but you can stand the horrible stench and monitor everything in the dark. From how I see it, you have the talent to become one of the best haunted house workers. Chen Gu slowed down his steps. I hear there is a haunted house in western Zhejiang that is currently thriving, and it has a very good review online. If you really want to initiate a change, you can try your luck over there. After all, if you want to change, might as well start at the best location. Regardless of the result, at least you've given it your all. Chu Changlin remembered Chen Ji's words and slowly nodded. Actually, his suspicion had not been vanquished, but he tried to ignore it. After all, this was his first time running into such a helpful visitor inside a haunted house, and it was natural for him to be weirded out. With the guidance from Chu Chang Lin, Chen Gu carried him to the headmaster's office. We've arrived. Now what? Just put me here. Chu Chang Lin shielded his phone with his hand. 
reading the messages sent by his boss, he felt rather guilty toward Chin Go. The man had lent him an ear and even helped to organize his life, but he was supposed to scare him with malicious intent. That did sound rather immoral. You need to be careful on your own. Right, how about you give me your phone number? If you run into any trouble, feel free to call me. Chin Gu was being very friendly, and that only made Chu Chang Lin feel much worse. Okay. Just outside the headmaster's office, while the camera was watching, the two exchanged numbers. I've explored the toilet, so I think I shall move on to another scenario, see you later. Chin Gu smiled and took out the diary from his backpack to see where he should head next. Seeing Chin Gu walk away, Chu Chang Lin did not know what to say. He sensed a unique power from the man, one that could give people around him hope and warmth. The phone in his palm kept vibrating. Chu Chang Lin lowered his head to look, it was his boss calling him. The latter probably saw Chin Gu leave on the surveillance footage, and he quickly called to demand an explanation. After he accepted the call, before Chu Chang Lin could say anything, he heard the yelling from his boss. What the hell are you doing? How many times did I stress for you to scare him and not show weakness? What have you done? Look at yourself. Chu Chang Lin held the phone, leaned against the door, and did not say anything. Why aren't you speaking? Remember the promise you gave me? Didn't you swear that you would let him walk in but crawl out? What happened in the end? The boss was angry. After all, his best employees went to visit another haunted house, and all three of them came back unconscious. Now, the competition had come to visit his own haunted house, and four of his employees had already been scared. No one would be able to suffer something like that quietly. I said that I would let him walk in, but I didn't promise that it would be him who crawled out. Now, he walked in, but I crawled out, I didn't go back on my promise, did I? Chu Chang Lin put his phone to the side. He was in no mood to listen to his boss scolding, but he thought that hanging up would be too rude. Say that again? Chu Chang Lin. If you dare, say that again. On the other end, the boss was so angry that his voice was shaking. Hearing no answer from Chu Chang Lin, he did not even end the call, but took out the walkie-talkie to give orders to the remaining actors at his haunted house. I don't care what kind of method you use, I need you to scare that visitor by the name of Chin Go. I will not allow him to ruin the name of Nightmare Academy. Boss, he has cleared all the previous scenarios already. I think it will be very difficult to scare him. I don't care what you think. For now, I need all of you to gather. After the call ended, Chu Chang Lin could not hear his boss voice anymore. He leaned against the door and it was hard to tell what he was thinking. The classroom, storeroom, toilet. Let's see, where should I go next? Chin Gu flipped through the diary and started to read the fourth entry. This entry was related to the stairs, and it recorded a classic ghost story known as the 13th step. Every stairs at Nightmare Academy had 12 steps, but at certain moment, a 13th step would appear, and those who stepped on it would see some strange things. When I first entered the haunted house, the worker reminded the visitors to pay attention to the stairs. This can only mean that some of them have been trapped. This is perfect. I should go take a look. Perhaps I can run into another valuable employee like Chu Chang Lin. The toilet was adjacent to the stairs. Chen Gu walked back the corridor and reached the mouth of the stairs. There was no light inside the staircase. The weak light filtered in from the corridor, and the deeper one went, the darker it was. The corner landing between the two floors was particularly dark. The stairs are made from cement, how are they going to make an extra step appear out of thin air? With the desire to master this technique, Chin Gu placed the diary inside his backpack and walked into the staircase without turning back. The background music changed, and cold air came from all corners. As Chin Gu headed up, he counted the steps in his mind. 1, 2, 11, 12. Everything's normal, there's no problem. Chin Gu was quite disappointed. He walked up two floors at one go, but he could not find anything wrong with the steps. Perhaps I've done something wrong. 
He ignored the other people and took out the diary and started to read while standing on the stairs. Without any hints, how am I supposed to trigger this scenario? When Chin Gu was figuring out that answer, footsteps suddenly came from downstairs. He looked through the gap in the middle but saw no one coming up. Is it the background music? Chen Gu could not see any visible speakers. Suddenly, he heard a child's voice. It was very soft, and it repeated the same word again and again. Daddy. Where is this voice coming from? Chen Gu had more sensitive hearing than normal people, but even he could not tell where the voice came from. The person seemed to be broadcasting the audio from different speakers in unison. Stop pretending and hiding. I've already seen you. Chen Gu placed a ballpoint pen in his shirt pocket, carried his backpack with one hand, and headed downstairs. Chapter 745 Weight of a father's love The light in the staircase seemed to dim, and cold wind blew from above his head, the operator of Nightmare Academy seemed to have switched the air conditioning to its lowest setting. When Chen Gu returned to the previous floor, he realized with a shock that the safety door that led from the staircase to the corridor had been locked and a new seal had been taped across it. It's locked? They plan to trap me inside the stairwell? Chin Gu stood at the door and looked out through the glass panel on the door. Shadows flitted across the dim corridor. They were of various sizes and appeared to be armed with various tools. When his attention was distracted by the shadows out in the corridor, the footsteps echoing down the stairwell returned. Someone is following behind me, huh? Chen Gu was not worried. He listened carefully and realized that it was a child's voice underlying the sound of footsteps. The boy seemed to have been separated from his father and was crying for help. This voice sounds weird, it doesn't sound like that of a child but is much shriller than a normal adult's voice. It's like an adult with a prepubescent voice. Closing his eyes, Chen Gu tried to pinpoint the boy's location. The sound of the boy is mixed with a very weak sound of static, so it should be coming from a speaker. Even though the sound that came from downstairs is equally scary, it sounds much clearer, so the child should be located at the lower part of the building. As he went down the stairs, the light became dimmer and the walls dirtier. There were more conspicuous stains on the walls, and they made one feel uncomfortable. Other than that, Chen Gu discovered something interesting. At every landing between each floor, there was a black jaw stick urn where three jaw sticks sat. There had to be a purpose behind them, but for the time being, Chinga had no idea what they were for. The jaw sticks are too damp to be lit, and some of them are even snapped. Chinga squatted down next to the urn and picked it up in his palm to study. To his surprise, there was a picture placed under the urn. He picked up the picture. It was that of a man in his thirties, wearing a mask and keeping his head lowered like he was very afraid of being seen. Chinga noticed that the man's left hand was holding someone's arm, but that part of the picture had been torn off. Daddy. The voice suddenly came from behind Chinga. Are you calling me? Chinga turned back to look, but there was nothing there. Narrowing his eyes, Chen Gu walked in the direction that the voice had come from, and he spotted a mini-speaker hidden inside the stained wall. No wonder there are so many dirty stains on the walls, it makes it more convenient to hide these mechanisms. Chen Ji's finger swiped the front end of the speaker. Something like this must be very expensive. If there's a chance, perhaps I should install some in my own haunted house. One of the reasons Nightmare Academy has grown so big is because it has mixed technology and ghost story, and that seems like the way to go. Chen Gu was not a prideful man. His willingness to learn was how he had managed to survive thus far. I haven't checked my account for so long. I suppose there should be quite a healthy sum inside it. After unlocking the four-star mission, I should approach Director Luo to ask for a loan to purchase a set of the latest equipment for the haunted house. Having my people control the latest equipment, hiding a scarier horror behind the darkness, that should be able to give the visitors quite an experience. Holding the picture in his hand, Chen Gu carried his bag and headed further down the stairs. The sound of footsteps and the boys crying came nearer and nearer. 
Nightmare Academy wished to create this impression that the ghost was catching up to Chen Gu. Using the various mini speakers installed in the stairwell and the manipulation backstage, that was exactly what they managed to do. For a normal person, after they entered the stairwell and realized that the strange sounds were moving closer and closer, their confidence would slowly crumble, but unfortunately, that day, Nightmare Academy met their match. After noticing the sounds getting closer, Chinga not only did not panic, he headed directly toward the source of the sound like he could not wait to meet the ghost in person, and that proved such a headache for the person manipulating the system in the background. He communicated non-stop with the actors to stop Chin Gu from entering the next scenario, before the preparation was done. Using the sounds to discern the source is pointless. Each floor has been installed with those speakers, and the sounds could have come from any of the speakers. Chin Gu stood inside the stairwell patiently. He focused. He attempted to pinpoint the third source of the sound amid the disturbance of the footsteps and the crying to triangulate the worker's location. Seeing this, the person thought that Chen Gu had given up. He quickly barked orders at his workers, telling them to get to work. Chen Gu did not know about the things happening backstage. He utilized his superhuman senses and picked up two sets of footsteps coming from the lower floor, one heavier than the other. One of them comes from the speaker, and the other probably means that the actor is on the move. Without any warning, Chen Gu charged forward. The moment that he grabbed the doorknob of the safety door, there was another pale hand that grabbed the same doorknob from the other side. Two hands fell on the doorknob at once, and they lifted up their heads at the same time to look at each other through the glass. In the corridor, there stood a girl wearing Nightmare Academy's uniform. She wore very thick makeup, and her cheeks were pale. A purplish strangle mark was visible across her neck. The scariest thing was her eyes. A finger was stuck through her pupil, and both sides of her lips were painted with red dye. Inside the stairwell, Chin Gu tightened his grip on the doorknob, and his eyes were glowing coldly. The image of a woman was reflected in his eyes, and a unique presence radiated off him. It was hard to describe, but in any case, he did not look like a living person. The girl did not expect that someone would suddenly grab the door and appear behind it. Her face twitched, but she maintained her professionalism. To prevent the finger that stuck in her eye from sliding down, the girl titled her chin upward and looked at Chen Gu in this strange posture. Are you the spirit inside the stairwell? The evil spirit that I will meet once the thirteenth step appears? Through the door, Chen Gu studied the girl carefully. Hearing Chen Ji's words, the girl was confused. It felt like Chen Gu was more in character than she was, but soon, a difficult conundrum was placed before her. As a specter born out of resentment and despair, how was she supposed to respond to Chen Gu? If she said yes, then it would appear like she was more easily persuaded than required. Why should a specter answer his question simply because he asked it? But if she said no, then how was she going to explain the way that she was dressed? The girl turned her neck to glance at the camera at the side. The script had not provided her the necessary lines should this situation arise. If you won't answer, I'll take it as a silent admission. However, I have a small complaint, where is the thirteenth step that you promised me? Chin Gu pulled on the safety door, and it swung open just like that. However, at that moment, something strange happened. The girl seemed to have received a new order from the backstage through her earpiece. She looked behind Chen Gu, and her expression was fearful like she saw something very scary behind Chen Gu. He has returned. After saying that, the girl turned and ran away, she did not even stop to pick up the prop finger that had fallen to the ground. He has returned? Chen Gu turned back to look. He assumed that it was Ol Zhou or the pen spirit who had appeared. He glanced at the girl that soon disappeared, and he was confused. Is this some kind of a story within a story, or has a real specter appeared? Then again, this place is built at the spot where in energy gathers, so the possibility of that is not zero. Chen Gu was still thinking when the sound of footsteps and the boys crying came from the staircase again. After hearing them for so long, it started to annoy him. Are you done? 
fine, you want to find your father? After I find you, I'll let you experience once, and for all the weight of a father's love. Chapter 746, Brother and Sister for Chin Go, whether he ran into a fake ghost or a real ghost, he was not afraid. If anything, he wished that his visitation would not be smooth sailing. If there was a talented living employee, he would slowly persuade them to join him, if there was a real ghost, things would be even easier. He would capture them and take them with him to be educated. Looking down the empty corridor, Chin Gu was about to head downstairs when one of the doors down the corridor was pushed open. It was unclear whether it was pure coincidence or another setup. Found the exit. F asterisk CK. It's been behind us all along. A man's voice trailed down the corridor. It sounded rather familiar to Chin Gu. Soon after that, a couple raced out of the room. They were the visitors that had entered the haunted house with Chen Gu. The man's name was Li Yuan, and his girlfriend was Xue Li. There was another quiet woman with them, she was reserved and passive. Chen Gu did not know her name. Huh? Why are you here alone? Li Yuan spotted Chen Gu. He noticed the unnaturalness on Chen Ji's face, standing alone in the stairwell. He waved and yelled, Brother, there's a ghost inside the stairwell. You need to come out. Don't stay there for too long. It's all right, the ghost has just left, and I doubt she'll return any time soon. You can't never tell with something like that. By the way, where are the three students that should have escaped with you? Li Yuan and Xue Li stuck close together. From their unkempt appearance, it felt like they had been through a lot. The four of us got separated after being chased by a ghost. Chen Gu came up with a random excuse. We heard the screams even though we were far away. I'm so sorry for abandoning you guys in the classroom earlier. Li Yuan was quite embarrassed. From his perspective, he was partially responsible for what had happened to the three students. In any case, we should move together from now on. We have already explored the art studio and music classroom. We're planning to go to the abandoned storeroom next. What about you? I've already been to the abandoned storeroom, the actor there is not feeling well, so I plan to head to the bottom of the staircase next. Chinga took out the picture that he had found hidden under the black urn. I plan to complete this mission of the thirteenth step. Thirteenth step? Li Yuan glanced at the picture. Brother, listen to me. I suggest you stay away from the stairwell. I've joined a WhatsApp group for those who have visited Nightmare Academy, and according to them, the stairwell might really be haunted. Haunted stairwell? According to the rumors, before the building was completed, there was a boy that came here to play, but he accidentally trapped himself somewhere and was never found. A small group of visitors swore that they saw a child inside the stairwell. They said that the urn in the stairwell wasn't placed there to scare the visitors, but to hold the boy back so that he wouldn't wander off from the stairwell. Do you have more details on this boy? Like his life experience, deficiency in his personality, or his family background? Chin Gu listed off a series of questions that Li Yuan had not considered before. Air, er, what's the point of knowing all that? What is the number for that WhatsApp group? Can I join? Chen Gu sounded very excited. I wish to share stories with them as well. Sure. Li Yuan added Chen Gu to the group. Those three students are so young, and they are separated from the rest of us, they must be very afraid now. Should we go look for them? You can go and find them. I shall follow my own plan. Chen Gu took the picture back and turned to leave. Are you really not afraid of ghosts? The voice was coarse like grinding sand. The one who spoke was the woman who had been really quiet so far. Are you talking to me? Chenga stopped moving. He was rather surprised because he noticed that the woman had been staring fixatedly at him, or rather, at the middle-aged man in the picture that he was holding. Yes. Of course, I'm afraid, but I'm not going to show that. If you're afraid, then I advise you stay away from the stairwell. Nightmare Academy used to have both day and night tours, 
but the night tours were cancelled because people kept reporting the appearance of a boy inside the stairwell. The woman's gaze moved away from the picture to Chen Ji's face. This is not a joke. I know it sounds hard to believe, but he really exists. Didn't you realize that even during daytime, the workers here rarely enter the stairwell or use the stairs to move between floors? From the way you're speaking, it sounds like you know some insider details. Chen Gu waved the picture that he was holding. You've been staring at the man in this picture. Do you know him? He's my father. It was he who brought my little brother here to play ten years ago. The woman revealed some startling information. Not only Chen Gu, both Li Yuan and Xue Li were stunned. In other words, the boy who went missing was your little brother. Li Yuan held Xue Li's hand and took a step backward. He felt his scalp going numb. The teammate who had been following them was the big sister of the little boy in the ghost story. This kind of mixing of ghost story and real life was a feeling that was hard to describe. It was like the event from a fairy tale suddenly happening to them. Li Yuan and Xue Li subconsciously edged toward Chen Gu. So, why are you at this haunted house? Just to visit? Aren't you afraid of being reminded of the tragedy from the past? Chen Gu did not expect the woman to possess this identity. She did not answer Chen Ji's question verbally. Instead, she smiled. This haunted house is already scary enough, and now you're only making it scarier. Can we not stay here anymore? Let's move on to the next scenario. Li Yuan came forth to smooth over the tension. He patted Chen Ji's shoulder. Let's move together, we shouldn't get separated anymore. After discovering the woman's identity, neither Li Yuan nor Xue Li wished to continue the tour with her. Just the thought made their skin crawl. That's fine with me, but I'm going to the stairwell next. Are you sure you want to come with me? Chen Gu put the picture away. He did not care about the woman's warning and headed into the stairwell again. Why are you so stubborn? Xue Li and Li Yuan did not know what to say. Chen Gu was purposely heading into danger, and the man refused to listen to any persuasion. In the end, neither of them dared to follow Chen Gu into the stairwell, and they split up again. Darkness slowly swallowed Chen Gu, and this time, he headed down the stairs to the lowest floor. If someone had been around then, they would have witnessed a strange scene. A young man walking down the stairs with his head lowered, counting the steps on his lips like he was conversing with someone. A glint of excitement burned in his eyes. Occasionally, he glanced at the camera, as if he was trying to memorize all the camera's location. Chapter 747 Games After Hearing the Woman's Story, Chin Ji's interest in the boy in the stairwell only grew. He dares to wander out in daylight, so he can't be a normal lingering spirit. At the very least, he is at the level of a baleful specter. But why would he stay here so long? Is it because he has unfinished business here? Could it be that the object of his possession is buried deep in the building's foundation? Chin Gu felt uncomfortable knowing that a boy's soul was unable to find peace. He decided to help the boy fulfill his last wish. Chin Gu rushed down the stairs. He did not know how to encounter the boy, so he found a blind spot from the camera and summoned Ol Zhou. Just now, a woman told me a little boy is wandering in this stairwell, can you sense his location? Chen Ge asked Ol Zhou. He was hoping for a positive answer. I can't feel anything. Perhaps he's in hiding. Ol Zhou looked around. But this place is rather strange. Strange? What do you mean? A normal lingering spirit wouldn't be able to appear in daylight. Even for Baleful Spectre, the period of appearance is only very short. If they wander too far away from their object of possession, it would cause irreparable damage, or at least, that should be the case. However, our haunted house is an exemption. I do not know exactly why. Even in broad daylight, we can appear anywhere we wish inside the haunted house. There is no limitation of time, and in fact, the place feels very comfortable to us. After describing Western Jiujiang's haunted house, Ol Zhou turned to study the stairwell that they were in. 
even though this place is not as comfortable as the haunted house, I can stay here for a very long time. This building appears to have shielded itself fully from the sunlight, and the in energy gathered here is very thick. You can stay in Nightmare Academy for a very long time. For a moment, Chinga thought of having Ol Zhou stay behind to act as a spy. Not only me, even normal spirits like the students from Muyang High School should be able to do it. This kind of location is too rare, Ol Zhou said meaningfully. Nightmare Academy has been in operation for many years already. This is probably due to its unique geographical location and mode of operation. Chen Gu leaned against the wall. The negative emotions vented by the visitors pooled around this place, and combined with the natural yin energy inside the building, if this is allowed to continue, this place will only attract more and more ghosts and monsters. Ol Zhou's brows were heavily creased, and he looked severe. Just like how our haunted house occasionally has special visitors, if the people here cannot deal with them, something very dangerous might happen, and it might lead to unimaginable results. You have a point. Chen Gu thought silently. So, what do you think we should do? We should take over such a dangerous location. After all, we have already gotten used to the danger. Ol Zhou sighed and offered his advice. After a moment's silence, Chin Gu finally said, with great power comes great responsibility. Even though I don't live in Xi'an High, I can't just let bad things happen to Xi'an High. After we deal with everything at our place, we should contact Director Luo, and with his help, hopefully, we can take over this building and snip the danger at the bud. It is lucky that they ran into someone like you, boss. Ol Zhou's brows relaxed, and he sighed. Chen Gu and Ol Zhou were a dream team and formed a great contrast to the boss of Nightmare Academy and his employees. This was probably due to Chen Ji's natural personal charm. With Ol Zhou in tow, Chen Gu ran to the first floor. The end of the stairwell was not the exit, but a large door painted on the wall. The door is drawn on the wall. According to the game rules, if the visitors found out the large door was merely a painting, they would definitely panic. After spending so much time inside the building, Chen Gu had familiarized himself with Nightmare Academy's layout. Both left and right sides of the building had a not-so-safe safety corridor leading to dead ends. The real path was the elevator in the middle, the elevator used by the visitors when they started the tour. There were pros and cons to this arrangement. On one hand, it could elicit the darkest fear in the visitor's heart, but on the other hand, should they encounter a special visitor, the employees themselves had no place to run. Ol Zhou, after we find the boy, you stay near the elevator. Keep the elevator on your floor. Understood. With Ol Zhou's help, Chinga felt much more relaxed. However, the man in the surveillance room was in for a surprise because he was about to witness something inexplicable. After Chin Gu and Ol Zhou arrived at the first floor, they soon realized that the building not only went up, it also had a staircase that led down into the basement. Staring at the basement first floor that was specially painted using red paint, Chin Gu paused. The atmosphere there was completely different to the scenarios above. The staircase was filled with dust and littered with dusty newspapers. Some of the copies even had dark brown stains on them. Picking up a random one, Chen Gu scanned through it. Carelessness of the father, the violation of building rules by the contractor, who was responsible for the boy's disappearance. It was unclear whether the copies were the haunted house's doing or real articles. In any case, they were all articles about the missing boy, and they made the readers feel rather uncomfortable. The expert's final analysis was that the boy should be hiding inside the incomplete underground basement. Chen Gu tossed the copy aside and bent down to glance at the basement corridor. There was no light, and the haunted house seemed to have left this place untouched. If this is not a scenario, there should be a no-entry sign near the entrance, but there isn't one, so this means that even though it might not be related to theme of Phantom School, it is a part of Nightmare Academy. Technically, it should be a hidden scenario. To prevent being discovered by the camera, Ol Zhou maintained a distance from Chen Gu. The latter walked down the stairs alone. His shoes stepped on the newspaper, 
and they rustled noisily. When he was halfway down the stairs, Chinga suddenly stopped. He turned back to look before turning back forward. His eyes landed on the last step. This staircase has thirteen steps? Chin Gu was sure that he was not wrong, the staircase that led underground indeed had thirteen steps. Is it a mistake by the builder, or did Nightmare Academy do this on purpose? Why would there be an extra step? Carrying the backpack, he moved downward. His left feet landed on the thirteenth step. Looking around, Chin Gu did not see anything special. However, when he tried to move forward, standing only on his left leg with his right leg moving in midair, the ground before him suddenly opened up. A man about the height of a seven-year-old child jumped out, screaming. Red paint covered his face, and he attempted to grab Chin Gu. Chin Ji's full attention was on the thirteenth step, so he did not expect there would be a hidden compartment on the ground just beyond the last step. The man surprised him, but Chin Ji's reaction when he was surprised was different from all the other visitors. Before confirming the man's identity, Chin Ji swung his backpack at his attacker and yelled out a name subconsciously. Suing. Chapter 748 I only remember, that day, everything turned red after those two simple words appeared from Chin Ji's lips, it seemed like Pandora's box had opened. The cold draft that seemed ever constant in the basement stopped, the speaker suddenly malfunctioned, and there was only one sound remaining in the world. Drip drop, drip drop. Blood dripped from a tall spot before landing on the ground, forming blood rosettes. A thick fog of blood materialized next to Chin Gu. The small figure hiding inside the compartment earlier lunged at Chin Gu, screaming. Before he got near, he was smacked backward by an old backpack. He landed on his limbs. He held his woozy head in his hands. Due to the attack, he did not hear what Chin Gu had said earlier. He gritted his teeth and was about to lunge forward again, but when he lifted his head, he saw a second person appear next to Chin Gu. Fresh blood slid down the shirt, and the pair of melancholic eyes were like two blood whirlpools, swirling with curses and desperation. The man felt like his soul was about to be sucked into them. The figure lay on the ground, and a chill spread through his body, down to his bones. His face that was smeared with red paint was frozen. It was as if time had stopped. Who is that? There is no such character among the employee roster. His Adam's apple shook, and fear was pouring out of his eyes. Seeing the figure's shaking body, Chingu soon discovered that he had stepped out of line. The thing hiding in the compartment was not a ghost, just a simple human worker. Actually, before Chin Gu made his move, he did consider the possibility that his assaulter was a human, but there was no haunted house on the market that would hire a child to be an actor, so his first thought was that his attacker was a ghost. The time that he had spent interacting with ghosts was far longer than with human beings. Combined with Oljo's previous analysis, the chance of Ghost appearing at Nightmare Academy was higher than normal, so that had led to his quick conclusion. However, after the figure showed himself, Chinga realized that the actor was actually a man with dwarfism. I was wondering why his voice is so weird, so different from a child's, he should be an adult pretending to sound like a child. Nightmare Academy had spent a lot of effort trying to create a scary atmosphere. Chin Gu remembered that there was a pair of twins working there. Their haunted house did not have real ghosts, so they relied on other methods to create horror. This man is an actor at Nightmare Academy. Unfortunately, he has witnessed Su Yin's appearance. If I don't come up with a solution, he will spread this news to the others. Nightmare Academy already suspects my haunted house of being haunted, so if they hear about this, who knows what kind of rumors they will start. Of course, he was not going to kill the man because of this. Chin Ji's mind quickly turned, and he came up with a solution in few seconds. The expression on his face did not change. He bent down to give the actor a helping hand as if he had not noticed Suin next to him. You scared me. I thought you were a real ghost. Sorry for hitting you earlier. Chin Gu tried to help the actor get up, but the man's eyes were not on him at all, he was fully focused on Suin. 
Noticing the strange reaction of the actor, Chinga acted like he just discovered the anomaly. He slowly turned his head around. When he saw Suin, his legs wobbled, and he landed on the step. What the f asterisk ck? When did he appear behind me? Chinga looked like he had been given quite a scare as well, but he soon recovered. The actors at your haunted house are quite good. I visited many haunted houses. Yours is the first to be able to scare me like this. Taking a deep breath, Chinga asked in a curious but shaky voice, like he was meeting Suin for the first time, Bro, how did you manage to walk without making a sound? Chenggu stood up and walked toward Suin. He only took a first step when he heard the shrill scream coming from behind him. Don't go over there. He. The man's face was scrunched up in fear. The scream probably pulled on his vocal cords because his voice was unnaturally high. Stop acting, I am an owner of Haunted House myself. Even though you all are very professional, you're not going to scare me with just that. Chengu walked stubbornly to Suin and raised his arm. He is not one of our actors. Following the man's blood curdling scream, Chen Ji's hand landed on Suin, and then his fingers phased through Su Yin's body. Hmm? Chengu acted like he was surprised by this development. He was stunned by disbelief. About two seconds later, he adopted the same expression as the man. There are really ghosts in this world? When he was frozen in fear, the man finally lost it. He crawled up from the ground and raced down the corridor. Shocked into mobility by the scream, Chingu snapped into motion. He jumped down the stairs, grabbed his backpack, and started running. How long has there been a real ghost in your haunted house? How would I know? If I knew that, do you think I will still work here? Basement 1. Basement 1. This is Basement 1. Please send help. The man grabbed the phone and yelled for help. He and Chinga raced down the corridor, and the situation was chaotic. Seeing the man and Chinga run away, Suin stood on the step with a confused look on his face. Ol Zhou, who had been hiding, joined him soon after. Our boss sure is a quick thinker. He's pushing the blame, no, I mean, he is planning something big. Ol Zhou did not dare to get too close to Suin. He stood several steps above the young man and said, Our boss now needs your cooperation. Suin turned back to look at Ol Zhou. He seemed to slowly understand what Chen Gu was doing. Do your best to scare them. There is still time to salvage the situation. Ol Zhou looked weirdly excited. It is about time we do it our way. Hearing that, Suin nodded. Droplets of blood slid down his shirt. He took one step forward, and the speakers throughout the building started to blur with static. The smell of blood curled around Chen Gu and the small actor's body like tight lasso. The red ghost trailed behind them and could not be shaken loose, no matter what. The two flew down the underground corridor and went back to the surface using another set of stairs. Boss. Are you there? Anyone? Say something. The man was so anxious that he was about to smash the phone. He waited for a long time before the boss who had been calling other people finally replied. Xiao Zhao, you were perfect. I saw everything on the monitor. You managed to scare that man until he fell. Nightmare Academy's boss praised the actor, but in that situation, the actor had no mood for compliments. His throat was sore from all the screaming. Boss, come to first floor quick. Call people to come here. I'm being chased. I can't hold on much longer. The actor's small legs moved quickly, his whole body was about to collapse. Is the visitor chasing you? Don't worry, I'll get people to go help you now. The boss still cared about his worker. It's not the visitor, the man yelled between breaths. Then who is it? A ghost wearing a red shirt. We have an actor wearing a red shirt. It's not an actor. Then who is it? It's a F asterisk king ghost. A real ghost. Chapter 749, the rumor is real, the small figure howled, and that finally brought his boss out from his joy. A 
A real ghost? A red ghost? As a haunted house operator, he knew quite a bit about the rumors regarding red ghosts. Only people who had deep resentment and were heavily tortured before death had the chance to turn into a red ghost. Regardless of whether it was real or not, that was how most ghost stories and movies portrayed it. A red ghost appeared in my haunted house, and he's not one of my hired workers, huh? That was how things currently stood, but the boss still had a hard time understanding it, certain things needed to be personally experienced to fully grasp it. Xiao Zhao, do not panic, I'll get people to go and help you right away. I don't care what that thing is, as long as he is in my territory, he needs to listen to my orders. The call was ended by the small figure directly, he did not have the time to listen to his boss boast. Inside the dark corridor, the man ran as fast as he could. This was the first time that he had felt fear inside the haunted house. The previously familiar environment felt unknown. A thin layer of blood seemed to cover all the props and mechanisms that he came across along the way. All the speakers malfunctioned, and the static continued endlessly. If one listened closer, there were some whispers and painful wails mixed in. The backstage seemed to be broadcasting a recording taken at a crime scene. The feeling of despair and pain spread through the haunted house, torturing everyone's ears, frightening their souls, pushing them to the edge of their sanity. What is happening? What's going on? How come it feels like the whole building is coming alive? It feels like the building is going to swallow us whole. The man screamed for help. He felt so helpless. How am I supposed to know? I came here from so far to visit you. I thought that I could come here to relax, but you found me a real ghost. Chinga realized that the man was running too slow. Even though Suin was purposely moving slowly, if they continued at this speed, they would be caught up too. Therefore, he picked up the man directly. Stop wiggling. Where is the exit to this haunted house? The elevator. The elevator is the only exit. For some of the floors, you need the worker's ID to access it. That is the exit. Chin Go held the man by his clothes, and like a living suitcase, his body was dangling in midair, but that did not stop him from screaming. Okay. Chin Go memorized this detail and rushed to the elevator at the middle of the first floor. He pressed the button rapidly, but the elevator stopped at the first floor basement and refused to come up. What's going on? Has the elevator broken down? That's impossible. The boss is conscious of the possibility of an accident inside the haunted house, so the elevator is maintained every day. Then, can you tell me why the elevator isn't coming? Chen Gu hissed anxiously like he was almost breaking down. Is there another worker in the basement? Are they hogging the elevator? No, I'm the only one arranged in the basement. The scenario is normally closed, but since today we're being visited by. At this point the man suddenly stopped, and the horror in his eyes grew. Wait a minute, the elevator not coming up means that someone has been holding the elevator at the basement. Does this mean there is more than one ghost? The man was frightened by his own thought. Without the use of makeup, his whole face was already white. If the ghost has taken over the elevator, then this route is not safe anymore. After all, since they can control the elevator, they could use the elevator themselves. The elevator was completely enclosed. The man did not dare imagine being trapped inside it with a ghost. What do you think we should do? Run. Find other people. When we're in a crowd, it should be fine. The man was really panicking. He had seen how Suin appeared, that impactful image was seared in his mind forever. In the future, whenever he dreamed about it, he would bounce up in bed. Without a better option and with the ghost approaching them, Chin Gu grabbed his backpack and the man and rushed to the nearest scenario. He kicked open the door, and the sound of a piano drifted out. The music was sad like something bad had happened to the pianist. Should we find a place to hide? Being carried by Chin Gu, the man finally had the chance to calm down and think. You sure? In most scary movies, the characters die because they corner themselves while attempting to hide. 
Chinga had far better experience when dealing with ghosts. As they conversed, the sound of blood dripping appeared in their ears. The dripping sound was like a note asking for their lives. It was too late to leave. Following the man's direction, Chingu hid them behind the piano. The smell of blood slowly thickened. Through the gap on the bottom of the piano, Chingu and the man saw a pair of bloody red shoes. The feeling of despair grew like vines. As if sensing someone's entry, the piano played louder and more violently. The melancholic aria entered Su Yin's ear, and the melancholy in his eyes deepened. He turned to glance at the door and saw the room name, Music Classroom. Various musical instruments were placed inside the classroom, and the most eye-catching was the piano placed in the middle of the room. Above the piano was a rope, like someone had committed suicide by hanging using the edge of piano as support. As the melody from the piano changed, the rope above the piano started to move on its own like the spirit had returned. The blood flowed, and Suin stopped in front of the piano. He reached out to pull on the swinging rope and sat down before the piano. After a moment, his hands fell on the piano keys as the memory from the past rushed into his mind. The bloodied fingers moved on the keys, and a different melody rang around the classroom. It felt like a rushing river, like moonlight, a dream that was always out of reach. Hiding behind the piano, Chingo looked at Suin. Suddenly, he realized that he did not know Suin as much as he should. This unique red specter seemed to be hiding many things in his heart. If there's a chance in the future, I should buy a piano for Suin. Perhaps he can use music to narrate the words in his heart. When the actor was scared sh asterisk less, Chinga took out his phone to look at piano prices. He put it away after looking through few pages. A new piano wouldn't be that familiar. Actually, this piano from Nightmare Academy is not bad. Please, shush. The man held on to Chingu for dear life. He saw Chingu as his partner, albeit one that he was not familiar with. The music suddenly stopped, and blood seeped out from underneath the white and black keys. However, upon closer inspection, this weirdly bright blood was not as viscous as real blood. Soon, the piano went out of control, and it started to play a strange tune. Suin, who was seated at the piano, was surprised, and then he heard a forlorn weeping sound coming from inside the piano. Chapter 750, So Painful The blood that leaked out from the piano keys pulled towards Su Yin's fingers. His brows were locked, and his pair of sad eyes stared at the inner part of the piano. Following the weeping, a pair of pale hands suddenly reached out from inside the piano to grab at Suin. The fingers closed, and the pair of hands reached toward the chair, but they failed to grab anything. They evaded? The master of the hands did not panic. The surprise so far was merely a test, the real terror would happen later. Reams of black hair curled around the piano strings, and a thin shadow crawled out from inside the piano. Long hair covered her face, and Suin could see her bright red lips and scary expression through the gaps in her hair. Why don't you stay? Why don't you stay? The woman lunged at Suin like crazy. When the hair that blocked her sight part, her eyes that wore a red-colored contact finally got a good look at this unique visitor. What appeared before her eyes was a red shirt drenched in blood, wounds that had not recovered, and black threads that weaved through the flesh and blood. This scenario was completely different from what she had expected, it was the first time that she had encountered something like that in her five years of working there. Suffocation made her lightheaded, and the nerves in the woman's body were pulled taut. When she was almost touching the special visitor, she realized that time was slowing down, and her body became lighter as if her soul had been sucked out. She could see her body slowly approaching the visitor like in an out of body experience. Chingu avoided Suin narrowly and ran out as fast as he could. Hey, Sister Ling is still in there. The small man waved his arms wildly. Then, why don't you go back to save her? Air. Sister Ling's sacrifice has brought us valuable time, we shouldn't waste her kindness. When the man said that, Chingu turned back to look. 
Honestly, he was quite worried, too. I hope Suin won't act too rashly and traumatize the poor woman. Inside the music classroom, the black and white keys were dyed red. The piano had gone out of control, and it played a maddening aria. Actually, when Shinga entered the classroom, he had immediately noticed that there was someone hiding inside the piano. The piano in the classroom was so much bigger than a normal one. It seemed to have been modified by Nightmare Academy to include a small space inside where a person could hide. Chinga madly ran, and the small actor screamed, attracting lots of attention. The actors inside the haunted house were used to screams and cries, but as they paid it more attention, they realized that something was wrong. How come it sounded so familiar? It sounded like the cries of their colleagues. Chingo led Suin through the music classroom, the clinic, and sports equipment room. He used less than three minutes to race through these scenarios. By the time the workers received the notice from their bosses and left their scenarios to gather, Chinga had already led the small actor to the second floor. Why is the elevator stuck at the basement? Your haunted house is built on top of a ghost's lair, is it? Chin Ji's casual observation caused the man to burst out in cold sweat. There had been a rumor about that before. He had not believed it then, but with reality placed before his eyes, he could not retort. Just the thought of the elevator that they used daily had been taken by countless spirits and ghosts, he could not stop his body from shaking. Who would dare take the elevator in the future? Where should we go next? Where are your people? I can't run anymore. Chen Gu was really tired. To make it look more authentic, he had been running like crazy, and everyone who saw it would think that he was an unlucky fella. I don't know. The elevator is the only exit. How about we go to the other scenario first, please don't stop. You have many other scenarios you haven't visited, right? Have you encountered a visitor that goes on the tour while carrying an actor? Stop wasting time. Tell me where your boss is. I'm sure he can deal with this. Chenga was not going to harm the workers too much. Previously, when the actors from Nightmare Academy and Futuristic Theme Park went to his own haunted house to make trouble, the Nightmare Academy's boss must have known about it. After all, without permission from the boss, the employees would not have left the haunted house on a working day. Chin Ji's tour at Nightmare Academy had been heavily scrutinized by the boss as well. He wanted to scare Chin Gu as revenge, but he could not have anticipated that he would be roped into his own plot. We're both haunted house owners, so there should be plenty of conversation topics for us. With that in mind, Chin Gu sped up, and with the direction given by the small actor, he arrived at the fourth floor. The boss is inside the headmaster's office. There is a hidden door behind the bookshelf, and behind it is the main control panel and surveillance office. Since it was an emergency, the small actor had to share that information. Understood. Kicking open the safety door, Chin Gu saw a group of people gathered outside one of the doors. There were males and females in different outfits, but they were all Nightmare Academy's workers. Is everyone gathered here? The workers at Nightmare Academy realized that something was wrong, so they had exited their scenarios and gathered before their boss office. Before they realized what was happening, they saw Chin Gu appear while carrying the small actor. Hearing Chen Ji's urgent footsteps, a few of them turned to Chen Gu. They did not have a good impression of Chen Gu, so when they saw Chen Gu was carrying a haunted house worker, their expression turned uglier. What are you doing? Let him down. Or else. Before the person who spoke finished, Chen Gu rushed to their side. He put down the small actor and banged against the headmaster's office door madly. Look at what you've done. Let me out. Chen Gu yelled crazily. The people wanted to stop him when they suddenly heard the change to the background music. An unknown static started to appear. This sound came from all the speakers, and even if they blocked their ears, they could still hear it. What's going on? The main control room was inside the headmaster's office. The office door was locked, and the boss of Nightmare Academy was not showing himself. Is the boss trying new thing? No. Look down the stairs. 
what is that? The red blood vessels crawled down the corridor and rushed at them like a blood wave, trying to pull them down into hell. An indescribable chill spread down the corridor. All the lights flickered, and then a red shadow appeared at the end of the corridor. He had his head lowered, touching the ugly wounds on his arms, his mouth mumbling, so painful. Chapter 751, I want to call the police. Do not panic. Please calm down. There is no need to worry. Perhaps this is nothing more than a prank. Yes, wasn't there an article earlier about visitors purposely going to haunted house to toy with the workers? Furthermore, there are so many of us. There is no need to be afraid. If there was a competition of blowing hot air, the workers at Nightmare Academy would definitely come out victorious. However, once Suin approached, they all moved back in unison like it had been rehearsed many times. Open the door. Chen Ji's expression was filled with anxiety, but the door to the headmaster's office refused to budge. The other workers wanted to stop Chen Gu, but were all forced back by the small actor. Quick, go and get the boss. This is not a joke. Chen Gu was a visitor. No matter how hard he tried, he was not going to persuade the workers, but the same words coming out from the dwarf worker's lips were far more convincing. Brother Zhao, what happened to you? Did something happen at your scenario? The leading man asked. He still had not understood the severity of the situation, and the first thing that he did was push the blame onto Xiao Zhao, insinuating that everything was his fault. Do you still remember Pan Tian, the guy who was responsible for looking over the underground scenario with me? He asked for sick leave and didn't come back to work, so in the end, he was fired. The man was very afraid now. His experience that day had awakened all the fearful memories in his mind, and they all connected. I think I remember him. The boss said that he went back home to get married. The leading man seemed to remember something. He did go back home, but not to get married, but to seek doctor. The fear in Xiao Zhao's eyes deepened. Pan Tian has gone mad. No one knows why, but one day at work, he suddenly snapped. He kept saying that he saw something underground. How come I didn't hear the boss say anything about this? All the workers gathered. They had no idea that something so scary had occurred at their working place. If the boss told you all this, would you still have come to work? Anyway, have you never considered why there were three scenarios underground but now only one is open? Why did he wish to seal up the other two scenarios? Haven't you wondered about that? Xiao Zhao was very tiny, and he needed to look up when he spoke, which caused his face to turn red. Chen Gu, who had been busy knocking on the door, perked up his ears to listen. So, there is really such a history here. With the danger encroaching, Xiao Zhao screamed, no one knows what Pan Tian saw, but if I am going to guess, he probably saw him. Xiao Zhao pointed at Su Yin. Just earlier, this man covered in blood suddenly appeared. He materialized out of thin air, before my eyes. I am not lying to you. Run. The thing hidden underground is coming up to get us. Red specters were much scarier than a normal ghost, the presence was not on the same level. Baleful specters could make people anxious, but red specters could draw out the deepest fear in their heart. Xiao Zhao was already traumatized, but now that he had shared the fear in his heart, he did feel better somewhat. The headmaster's door was still closed shut, the boss refused to show himself. Xiao Zhao, as the only worker who knew the truth, kept making things worse, and finally, the fear within the other workers exploded. A blood wave crashed at them. This scene out of a nightmare happened in real life, and the feeling could not be described. The corridor seemed to morph into a python about to swallow them. The lights went off again and again, and every time that it came back on, the red shadow would be that much closer. The static in the speakers grew louder, and it eventually overwhelmed the original background music. Instead, a new sound appeared. It sounded like whispers and cries for help, no one could tell what it was. All they knew was that even if they closed their ears, they could still hear the sound. Whenever Suin took one step forward, the workers took one step back. 
It was unclear who made the first move, but just as they reached the mouth of the staircase, someone rushed down the stairs. However, once they saw the situation downstairs, they understood the seriousness of the situation. There was a worker lying unconscious at the door of the music classroom, an actor with white foam on his lips was curled up at the corner, people littered the corridor like a war had just happened there, the place was filled with signs of struggling. Just one hour earlier, those people had been having lunch with them, and now, they were all lying unconscious on the ground, there was no scene more impactful than that. The real ghost has arrived. The demands from the boss, the code of conduct, the salary, the examination, everything was tossed out of their brains. Those employees only had one thing on their mind, get out of there. Because they knew that if they ran one step slower, it would be them who were lying on the ground with foam pouring out of their mouths. They did not dare stay even a minute longer. They rushed to the elevator, but no matter how many times they pressed on the button, the elevator refused to come up. It parked itself on the basement floor. The speakers placed in the corners broadcasted the screams of a stranger. The yelling pulled at the listeners' hearts, and chills ran all over their bodies. Damn it! Who was hogging the elevator? But why would it stop at the basement? Shouldn't the ghost have left the underground? Wait, does this mean that there is another ghost down there? Now the key question is, since the elevator is the only exit, how are we supposed to get out of here? The remaining workers pushed at the elevator door, and the feeling of despair spread like a disease. You only have one exit here? What if there's an accident? Is this how Nightmare Academy treats its visitors? You view the visitor's safety so lightly? Linchinga said that it did not cross his mind that his own haunted house did not even provide a single exit for the visitors, but there was one big difference between the two haunted houses. Once something happened at Chin Ji's haunted house, the employees would show up at the first moment to help the visitors by removing the threat. Being questioned by Chin Gu, the workers from Nightmare Academy stammered over the answer. Now is not the time to discuss something like that. Yes, I just remembered something, there are other passageways in our haunted house. The leader was struck by an inspiration. Follow me, we'll go up to the second floor. After the red specter appeared, everything in the building started to go wrong. The interior was encased in a thin layer of blood, and creepy noises kept coming out from the speakers. It felt like the spirits within the building had returned. In the emergency, the group did not stop to think about it and followed the man as he rushed up to one of the scenarios on the second floor. This is it. The leader pulled back the thick curtains, and a weak ray of sunlight cut into the room. Without any hesitation, he kicked away the props on the ground. He grabbed one of the sturdier props and smashed the wooden boards that sealed the window. We can't leave by the door, but we can use the window. The workers at Nightmare Academy worked surprisingly well during the crisis. Without much order, the few employees started to move and began the deconstruction. Pa. The wooden boards started to loosen, and by then, Su Yin's footsteps were coming from the corridor. The sound of feet walking on blood caused everyone to break out in cold sweat. It came closer and closer. Quick, work faster. The thick stench of blood rushed in from the door. The sound of footsteps came closer and closer before finally disappearing. Just as everyone was confused, Su Yin's pale head peered into the room. He was blocking the doorway. He's here. He's coming to get us. The workers gave it their all as they took down the wooden boards, and the window before them became their only hope. Xian High Central Street was Xian High City's most famous shopping avenue. No matter the time of day, the street was always bustling. Big cities are indeed different from small towns. Ol Wu carried the new suitcase that his son had brought him and lugged it rather tiredly on his back while walking down the road. Some of the kinder passers-by told him that he could have dragged the suitcase on the ground, and that would save him some energy. To them, he explained that he was training his body, but in reality, it was because he could not bear to dirty the wheels of his son's present. This is such a beautiful suitcase, I won't allow it to get dirty. 
He had been poor for his whole life and supported his own son to college, using his meager income from rearing crops. Now that his son had settled down, he had invited his old father to visit him in Xi'an High. This was Ol Wu's first time going on a long journey, and like a child, he was curious about everything. He looked at the skyscrapers that reached into the sky and could not help gasping continually at how different a big city was. He looked around the city for a long time, and when he was about to move forward, Ol Wu suddenly heard an insistent banging sound that came from the second floor of one of the nearby buildings. Is it undergoing renovation? Before Ol Wu had the chance to turn to look, he heard a loud bang coming from above. The originally sealed window was shattered with brute force. The wood chips floated down the sky. The crowd's attention was pulled toward it, and as they raised their heads, something even more shocking happened. A woman covered in red paint, with half a finger still stuck in her eye, jumped out from the broken window. Someone is committing suicide. Ol Wu was so scared that the precious suitcase slipped from his fingers. He quickly pulled out his phone and tried to call the emergency services, but the woman turned in midair and landed rather safely. Then, she climbed up from the ground and ran into the crowd, screaming. Before the crowd could recover, another man covered in blood with half of his face ruined by scars also jumped out of the window. A suicide pact? Ol Wu just pressed one. He was hesitating between calling the ambulance or the police. However, before he could make a decision, a childlike figure appeared at the window. Be careful. Olwu dropped his phone and rushed forward as the small figure jumped out from the second floor window. Without thinking about it, Olwu reached out to catch the falling child. Searing pain came from his arms. He held on and opened his lips to ask, Child, are you all right? Thank you so much. An adult male voice came from the small body. Ol Wu was so surprised that his arms weakened, and the person that he was carrying crumpled to the ground. The person did not make as much as a whimper when he landed. He held his bruised head and ran as far away from the building as he could. What is happening? Should I call the police? What should I do? Ol Wu stood where he was. Just at that moment, another figure dropped down from the second floor. The person was wearing a doctor's coat, and the tag around his neck pinpointed him as the health teacher. However, the man had six arms, and from the back, he looked like a mutated spider. One after another, people in various strange outfits dropped down from the second floor of the building. Like a piece of living art, they had successfully attracted the attention of everyone on that boulevard. Chapter 752 Number 514 Theme Park Care Unit Chen Gu was the last to jump down from the second floor. When he stood at the windowsill, he was shocked by the size of the crowd that had gathered on the street. I seem to have gone overboard this time. To not allow himself to stand out too much, after a moment's hesitation, Chen Gu also leaped out from the window. Another one is jumping. Go and catch him. The screams echoed down Xi'an High Central Street, and more and more people started to rush toward the building. About ten minutes later, after the police arrived, the scene finally started to calm down. Do not stay here and block the road, please refrain from blocking the traffic. Let the ambulance through. The police officers tried their best to move the spectators back. They did not spend too much time to find the few people who jumped out from the building. The things hidden underground have come alive. Officers? I know this is very hard to understand, but that is the truth. Xiao Zhao kept jumping up and down, trying to get the police's attention. There are still other visitors trapped inside. Quick! You have to go save them. The few haunted house workers were agitated, still calming down from the trauma. After being briefly interviewed by the police, the officers looked at them strangely. Initially, the police had thought that there was some kind of serial killing. Then, they had thought that perhaps the haunted house had been set on fire, and the people inside had been forced to jump out from the window to escape. However, after hearing the explanation from the haunted house workers, the officers felt like they had been made a joke. The things hidden underground? 
Do you know what the consequence of making a fake police report is? The leading police officer warned with a grim expression. After getting a grasp of the situation, he suspected that this was a promotional feature by Nightmare Academy to obtain some traffic online. It was all a fake show. We're not lying to you. It is real. The thing came out of nowhere. He was wearing a red shirt. The few conscious haunted house workers talked over each other to try to describe the situation to the officer. The eyes frozen in fear, the words that came a bit too quickly, the exaggerated manner in which they spoke, the haunted house workers appeared like they were still in character and were unable to shake their identity loose. Fine, fine, where is your boss? I wish to talk to him, get him out here. The leader felt like he was unable to get through to these people. Communication was impossible. The boss? The workers looked at each other. They all suddenly realized that their boss was still inside the haunted house. Oh no. The boss is still inside. Waving the golf club in his hands, the boss of Nightmare Academy, Shang Guan Ching Hong, frowned slightly. This is a bit too light. Oh well, I can't find a better weapon in such a short amount of time anyway. This will have to do. He turned to look at the computer screen and inspected the few clips that he had cut out from the surveillance video. Chen Gu was the main character in all of these videos, and the clips that he had taken all showed Chen Gu running away in fear while inside his haunted house. With such a weak boss, how is it possible that Jiujiang haunted house could ever reach the height of my nightmare academy? Their boss is so easily scared. Look, he's crying like a baby at my haunted house. Even though many accidents had happened that day, the boss was still very happy. He felt like he had saved the reputation of his haunted house and heavily damaged the pride and arrogance of his competitor. So what if the real ghost hiding underground has appeared? As long as it appears inside my haunted house, it can be counted as a part of my haunted house. All's fair in love and war. Shang Guan Ching Hong did not think that he had done anything wrong. I have the clips of Chen Gu being scared until he mentally collapsed. Now all I need is to leave this place safely. After all the clips that he needed were safely transferred to his phone, Shang Guan Ching Hong put his phone away. He put on a safety helmet, knee guards, and gripped the golf club with one hand. It's time to leave. Even though the thing coming from underground is creepy and scary, I have so many workers. As long as we cooperate together, nothing is going to harm us, not even a specter from the beyond. Taking in a deep breath, Shang Guan Ching Hong pulled open the door of the headmaster's office. Everyone, do not panic. Listen to my instructions, and we will leave this place safely. The door opened, but there were no workers waiting for him outside like he had imagined. There was not a single person in the dark corridor, only the cold wind from the air conditioning. Where is everyone? Standing alone inside the very dark corridor, Shang Guan Ching Hong could not help his heart from racing. He took out the walkie-talkie and yelled loudly into it. Where are you? Xiao Zhao? Oli? Xiao Zhao? He switched through many channels, but there was no answer. The only response was the echo of his own voice reverberating down the corridor. What is going on? There was no one on the walkie-talkie, and no one answered his phone calls. It was as if he was the only person left in this world. Where has this bunch of slackers run off to? Shang Guanqing Hong held the golf club tightly. After a brief panic, he immediately calmed down. When the accident happened, the first thing I did was contact them. The workers on this level should have gathered outside the door. Now that they have disappeared, there are only two explanations. First, the thing from underground is currently chasing after them. They have attracted the thing's attention to give me the chance to escape. Secondly, they have all been taken down already. If that's the case, it's pointless for me to be worried or afraid. I will eventually run into the thing. Blindly panicking will only make me lose my focus. Shang Guanqing Hong was not easily fooled. After all, he was the boss of the biggest haunted house at Xi'an High. However, probably due to the smooth sailing of his career, 
there was a clear deficiency in his personality. My goal has already been reached, so I only need to guarantee my own safety. Shang Guan Ching Hong decided to leave immediately. The safety of his workers? That was something to be worried about only after his own safety had been ensured. He edged carefully to the elevator. It took him a full two minutes to cover that short distance. The scenario that looked so familiar suddenly took on a strange and unique sense of horror. Wiping away the cold sweat on his forehead, Shang Guan Ching Hong pressed for the elevator to come. However, the elevator seemed to have malfunctioned, and it kept getting stuck at the basement. What is going on? He pressed the button several times before the number shown on the panel started to change. The elevator was slowly ascending. Why is it so slow? Standing at the elevator door, doing nothing, fear curled itself around Shang Guan Ching Hong. He looked down the dark, empty corridor and felt like something would appear in the dark. Fear was like a toxin, slowly spreading through his body. When the elevator reached the second floor, Shang Guan Ching Hong heard footsteps coming from the stairs. The background music also changed then. He could hear the voice of a strange man rather clearly. The thing is coming. The footsteps coming from the staircase became more pronounced. Shang Guan Ching Hong stared at the number on the panel, and both of his hands held the golf club tightly. Quick. When the footsteps appeared on the fourth floor, the elevator also reached the same floor. The elevator doors that were covered in different paints opened to the sides. Shang Guan Ching Hong hurried into it, but he only took the first step when his whole body froze. There was someone else inside the elevator. The man was cowering in the corner of the elevator booth. His face was pale. When he saw the haunted house boss carrying a golf club, he was given quite a fright. Who are you? Both of them spoke at the same time, like they had rehearsed it earlier. They studied each other for about three seconds, and the boss was the first to break the silence. Are you one of the visitors? He was paying Chen Gu his full attention that day, so he had not paid much attention to the other visitors. The middle-aged man with a white face nodded cautiously. He looked at Shang Guan Ching Hong guardedly. And who are you? I am the boss of this haunted house. There is currently a small accident. Don't ask too many questions. The important thing is that I will now get you out. Before the visitor, the boss acted very professional. After hearing Shang Guan Ching Hong introduce himself as the boss, the other person inside the elevator sighed conspicuously in relief. Okay. When you're famous, there is bound to be some detractors. The accident today is because a competitor came here to create trouble. Normally, something like this wouldn't happen at my haunted house. Shang Guan Ching Hong forced a smile and very easily shifted all the blame onto Chen Gu, which was not that far from the truth. Friend, what is your name? My surname is Zhou. Everyone calls me Ol Zhou. The footsteps from the corridor came rapidly they were already turning the corner of the fourth floor. Shang Guan Ching Hong quickly pressed for the elevator doors to close. The elevator doors that were painted with fake blood slowly closed, and those strange footsteps were drawing closer and closer. Currently, trapped inside the elevator, the haunted house boss could not do anything. His heart was filled with anxiety. Close, close, close. Perhaps God heard Shang Guan Ching Hong's prayers. When the elevator doors closed shut, the footsteps were still several meters away. We're safe now. He heaved a sigh of relief. However, something that he did not expect then happened before his eyes. An arm reached out from inside the elevator to block the closing doors. Shang Guan Ching Hong swore that he was not mistaken, the pale arm indeed reached out from inside the elevator. The hand touched the elevator door, causing them to open again. Shang Guan Ching Hong glared at Ol Zhou, who had moved to the door, and he was so angry that his head was about to explode. His lips were devoid of color, but before he could get any words out, the thick stench of blood rushed into the elevator like a wave. When he raised his head, Shang Guan Ching Hong saw Ol Zhou move to the back, 
and a strange man was standing at the elevator door. The shirt was as red as blood, and black curses crawled all over his body, cutting in and out of his flesh and skin. Don't come any closer. The haunted house boss squeezed himself into the corner and watched as the bloody figure strode into the elevator. From the corner of his eyes, he saw old Joe press for the doors to close. The elevator doors slowly closed, and this time, no one was there to stop them from closing. Your boss is still inside the haunted house? The leading officer saw the worry on the workers' faces, but he could not understand what had caused them to react thusly. Officer please, you have to save our boss. He's still on the fourth floor. There are other visitors still inside the haunted house. The officers felt like the haunted house workers did not sound like they were joking, so they nodded. They gathered at the front entrance of the haunted house. This elevator is the only exit in our haunted house, but the elevator is currently being controlled by some unnatural beings. It stopped at the basement and refused to move. Xiao Zhao was jumping all over when he spoke. He led the way and pointed at the panel showing the number. However, when he saw the number of the panel, his whole person froze. The number showing was two, which meant that the elevator was currently on the second floor. The elevator moved? This must mean that the thing from the basement has taken the elevator up to the second floor. Xiao Zhao screamed. The number on the panel was still changing and it soon turned to one. Several seconds later, the elevator doors opened slowly before the police officers and the haunted house workers. The boss of Nightmare Academy was lying unconscious on the ground, still gripping the golf club. His body was spasming, and the man had already lost his consciousness. Boss! The workers rushed forward. Please, someone call the ambulance! If this was a self-made show, it had gone over the line. The boss himself was unconscious. The leading officer soon realized that things were far more serious than he had imagined. He quickly ordered a few men to take the elevator into the building. They scoured the whole building but could not find the unnatural being mentioned by the haunted house workers. Instead, they ran into many fainted haunted house workers and a couple that looked at them strangely. When they saw the police approach, the couple thought that they were actors of the haunted house. They tried their best to trigger the event. About 30 minutes later, the area near the entrance was cleared out. The fainted haunted house workers and boss were sent away in ambulances. The remaining visitors and actors stayed back to give their statements to the police. In the end, everyone was taken to the nearest police station. Sitting inside the police car, Chin Gog very expertly helped himself put on the seatbelt. He did not expect that his first visit to Exion High would end up with him sitting inside Exion High City's police car. Officer, you have to trust me, I am really innocent. I came from Jiujiang and traveled so far just to visit the haunted house. Actually, I am also one of the victims. Get out the way. Emergency. Get out of the way. Medical carts rolled down the corridor, rushing the unconscious patients into the emergency room. There's no more space. Send the other patients to the other sick hall. Xiao Zhang, go and call Dr. Liu and Dr. Su, who are on off-duty, to come back to work. A large group of workers at the haunted house on Exion High Central Street have fallen unconscious. Current speculation is that they all suffer from food poisoning. They might have ingested food that caused hallucinations. There is nothing wrong on the physical scan. They probably suffered from some kind of trauma, and the fainting is because the body's self-defense mechanism kicking in. When will they wake up? The leading officer was suffering from a headache. Exion High had always had a good security, and the area under his jurisdiction had never seen something like this before. No clue. Shortest will be one or two hours, but it might be days, we cannot tell for sure. The doctor could not give an exact answer. If you are in a hurry, I suggest you transfer them to Jiujiang Central Hospital. I hear the doctors there specialize in fainting spells. They even have a special care unit that accept patients with this kind of illness. There's a hospital that specializes in treating fainting patients? 
the leading officer hesitated. This had gone beyond something that he could make quick decision about. Other patients should be fine, but the condition of the patient by the name of Shang Guan Ching Hong is very serious. He is in a deep coma and does not respond to any external stimuli. It is my professional suggestion that he be transferred to Zhejiang immediately. He should receive treatment from the leading experts. Okay, I will report that to my superior instantly. The leading officer nodded. The hospital in Zhejiang is called Zhejiang Central Hospital, yes? Yes, Zhejiang Central Hospital, number 514, theme park care unit, the doctor said seriously. I do not know why they named their unit that way, but I am certain that they are the best of the best in treating coma and fainting patients. Chapter 753, Who? Say again, I've memorized the name of the care unit. I will relay that to my superior now. You'd better move fast, the patient's condition is very unstable. If he stays in coma for too long, it'll cause damage to his brain. Understood. The leader left an officer behind to manage the scene while he led the other people back to the police station. Pushing open the glass door of the police station, a wave of commotion rushed at the captain. He frowned, looking at his place of work. The place was bustling with people, and they had exaggerated expressions as they unloaded their grievances onto the officers on duty. This has become such a lawless place. Is this how the rules work? The captain yelled at the young officers who were on duty. His voice was stern. Captain Kai. You're finally back. It's not that we're not following the rules, but the situation is very unique. The young officer handed the compiled written record to Captain Kai. Red Spectre? Ghost Stories? Spirits Underground? Knows how to play the piano? What is all this? Captain Kai slammed the document heavily on the table. Have you all gone insane? Have you lost your basic common sense? No, Captain. We've tried to understand it, and we even used the lie detector, it doesn't look like they're lying. Horsecker asterisk p. Toss, that broken machine out then. Captain Kai was angered. He took over the investigation personally, but after a long period questioning, he realized that he had spoken too soon. This group of actors that had escaped from the haunted house were so into character that it appeared like they were no longer able to differentiate between ghost stories and the real world. Has that haunted house hired a bunch of asylum patients? Since he could not get anything from the haunted house workers, Captain Kai decided to shift his focus to the visitors. The workers could have lied to protect the haunted house, but the visitors would not. To prevent the workers from being influenced by the actors, Captain Kai purposely moved the three visitors to a separate room. Follow me, please. After closing the door, Captain Kai, who maintained a severe expression, finally relaxed. Calm down, you only need to answer honestly. There is no need to be concerned. This was Li Yuan and Xue Li's first time at the police station, so they were nervous. In comparison, Chin Go looked as comfortable as if he was at his own home. He even got up to use the water dispenser to fetch himself a glass of water. When the accident happened, there were only the three of you inside the haunted house, right? Captain Kai's eyes moved away from Chen Gu to fall on the couple. There were also three students and a young woman who didn't like to speak, Li Yuan answered. We verified the identities of these four, they are all temporary actors hired by the haunted house. Captain Kai had his men send in the written record and he flipped through the details, casually. Give it some more thought. During your tour, did you come across other visitors or people that didn't appear normal? People that didn't appear that normal? Through the window of the room, Li Yuan looked outside. None of them looked normal. He really did not understand what was happening. He merely went for a haunted house visit but ended up at the police station. Sir, me and my girlfriend just went to visit a haunted house, hoping that it would be a memorable date. We had no idea the place was hiding such a big secret. If we knew that, we would have demanded to be let out. Why would we stay there for so long? Understood. 
In other words, the two of you didn't come across the red monster mentioned by the actors during your tour. Captain Kai very quickly caught on to the key. The visitors had no reason to lie, so they should be telling the truth. The monster and spirits at the bottom of the building are probably a show designed by themselves. I suspect that this is their latest promotional method. I guess so. Li Yuan and Xue Li were still shivering. They had only just realized that the three students and young woman were all actors. To have actors play visitors to get their trust before betraying them, that was a cruel tactic. Captain Kai asked a few more questions, and they answered honestly. In the end, Captain Kai could not get anything new, so he moved his attention back to Chen Gu. What's your name? Chen Gu. I hear you're from Zhejiang, and you came here today to visit this haunted house? Yes, I operate a haunted house myself, and I came to visit the biggest haunted house in Xi'an High to study. Chin Gu did not hide this information because he knew that the police could find it out easily. In other words, you are in the same business as the actors outside? Captain Kai narrowed his eyes. Years of experience told him this young man was more than he seemed. My business is incomparable to theirs. I have a small budget business. They are much better than I am. Chen Gu pouted sadly. According to witness accounts, you jumped down from the second floor window alongside the actors, so did you see the red monster that they mentioned? Honestly, I was made confused by them. At the time, everyone was screaming, and the speakers were broadcasting this strange noise. Everyone was running, so I was following them. No matter what Captain Kai asked, Chen Ji's answers were perfect. Okay, the three of you, please follow this officer. After we complete some paperwork, you can leave. After they left, Captain Kai stared at the chair that Chen Gu had vacated. This young man's mind is very sharp, and his answers were perfect, it was it before I asked the question, he already had the answer. He doesn't appear that old but has a calmness beyond his age. During our conversation, there was not a ripple of emotion in his eyes. That is too scary. No, I need to look further into this. Perfection is a form of imperfection. Captain Kai used the computer to log into the law enforcement server. In the modern age, looking for criminal data was very simple. After he keyed in Chen Ji's information, he was stunned when he saw the page that popped up. The man was not only not a criminal, he had even been given a medal for his numerous contributions to the city of Zhejiang. He had received medal and award from the inspector of Zhejiang Station personally. He had also been a helpful aide in many police cases, just the information of his commendation was enough to fill up a whole page. With his lips twitching, Captain Kai suspected that Chen Gu was an undercover police officer sent over by Zhejiang law enforcement. This kind of background was rare even in Xi'an Hai. There is short interval of time between each entry. Does this guy spend most of his time doing nothing but wandering about the various crime scenes? Captain Kai found that very hard to accept. After reading through everything, he took out his phone and called a number. It rang a few times before being answered. An impatient voice came from the other end. Ol Kai, speak quickly. I don't have time to waste. Li Jing, after you got transferred to Jiu Jiang's heavy crime unit, even your tone has changed. We're working on a homicide case, so I don't have time to chat. I'm hanging up. After this case is over, I'll treat you to a meal. Wait, this won't take up too much of your time. Captain Kai looked at the computer screen. I'm calling you because I want to ask you about someone. Who? Chen Gu. Who? Say again. He's the boss of a haunted house in Zhejiang. His name is Chen Gu. I saw the page that you had on him inside the shared server. He has gone to Xi'an High? Li Jing sounded worried. Yes, we got an emergency call this afternoon. People were jumping out from a haunted house, and we found him there. Was he the one who made the call? No, he was one of the jumpers. Chapter 754 Pleasant surprise, Chen Gu jumped out of the building? That shouldn't be. 
Is he all right? Li Jing sounded confused. That kid is very well trained. Quite a number of people jumped out of the second floor window, and he is the only one that walked away unscathed. Captain Kai was confused as well. He had checked the surveillance footage from the building opposite. Of all the jumpers, Chin Gu was the one with the most experience. The slowing down, the landing pose, everything was right out from the textbook like he had done it many times before. That does sound suspicious, but I don't think you should worry that much. As long as it was not him who made the call, it probably isn't anything big. Li Jing shared his experience. We have a few injured individuals and some still unconscious, that is nothing serious? I don't know why he is an ex Ian Hai. If you have the misfortune of receiving his emergency call in the future, you will understand what I mean. Ol Kai, enjoy the temporary peace now. I still have something else to do, I gotta run. Li Jing then prepared to hang up. Wait a minute. What do you mean by that? If you don't explain yourself, there is no way I am going to let you hang up. Captain Kai could be quite stubborn. Fine, fine. You win. What else do you want to know? Ask quickly. Li Jing was really busy. He had just gotten discharged from the hospital, and the work had been piling up. He had more than a few cases that he needed follow-up on. I've looked through his information and the time between each entry of his police work involvement is very short. In fact, there's a period where he provided two vital pieces of information for two different cases within one week. Captain Kai sounded serious. Can a normal person run into two serious crime cases within one week? Can so many killings happen so consistently around a normal person? Unless he's the killer, the possibility of this is very, very low. Your suspicion is very valid, but did I say that he is a normal person? Li Jing knew the man had misunderstood something. So, he really is one of your people. I wish that was the case. The kid has a natural talent for law enforcement, but unfortunately, he wastes that talent on running a haunted house. Li Jing sighed regretfully. When we first received the call from him, we ran a thorough background check on him. He might look easygoing and very not serious normally, but he carries a pain that he doesn't share with others. Oh? What's his story? About one year ago, both of his parents practically disappeared off the face of the earth. There were no bodies or any news about them. Even now, the case is still open. Based on the report from a local senior, the child was devastated. He lived a purposeless life for a very long time and finally found his footing several months ago. It was probably then that he started to take it upon himself to find his parents. The surveillance near his home showed him leaving home late at night, he was probably compiling his own clues. He went to those dangerous places to look for his family. After hearing what Li Jing had to say, Captain Kai did not respond instantly. His memory of Chen Gu appeared in his mind, and that pair of calm eyes struck him the most. His actions are very dangerous. Haven't you tried to advise him against doing so? We've done that more times than I can count, but it's pointless. Actually, I can understand why. Place yourself in his shoes, his family is still missing, and all the memories in the past have become a haunting memory. A person like that will definitely hate criminals with a passion. Li Jing had a lot of respect for Chen Gu, he admired him a lot. He had survived a complicated and troubled past to grow into a man with a great, unshakable sense of justice. Captain Kai started to see it that way as well. Okay, I get it now. I won't disturb you anymore. Captain Kai hung up. He looked at the long page of Chen Ji's heroics and spaced out. Who knew what he was thinking? After a long time, he took out his phone to call his superior to ask them for permission to send the boss of Nightmare Academy to Jiujiang for treatment. After getting the permission, Captain Kai departed for the hospital immediately. Chen Gu left Xian Hai Police Station at around 5 p.m. Compared to Jiujiang Police Station, the procedure undertaken at Xian Hai Station was much more complicated 
but that was probably because the officers in Jiujiang knew Chen Gu and skipped most of the steps. I thought that I could leave around noon but ended up spending a whole day here. After leaving the station, Chen Gu got a cab and headed back to Nightmare Academy. After all, he needed to meet up with Su Yin and Ol Zhou. Xian High Central Street was filled with busy people as usual, the incident that afternoon did not slow down the traffic there. With his head lowered, Chen Gu mixed in with the crowd and glanced at the haunted house. The door was closed, and there was police tape at the door. I can't use the front door. I'll need to cut through the shops. Chen Gu entered the shopping lot through the building's other entrance. He activated the recorder to try to contact Su Yin. He walked around the building for several minutes, and suddenly, the recorder gave out a static sound. Chinga realized that Su Yin had sensed him. He turned into the toilet and found an unoccupied cubicle and started to call Su Yin's name in his heart. The lights in the toilet flickered, and the doors creaked. Suddenly, the light went out. The faucet dripped noisily, and a faded scent of blood permeated the air. Then a row of bloody letter appeared on the cubicle door. The toilet of the underground parking lot. Su Yin wants me to go there? Chen Gu did not think too much of it and headed to the basement parking lot. He searched for a long time but could not find a toilet, all he found was an abandoned storeroom that had a no-entry sign on it. This should be the place, right? Opening the door, Chen Gu entered it. This place was had indeed formerly been a toilet, but it had been abandoned a long time ago and was used to store various trash. He called Su Yin again, and this time, the red Su Yin and the honestly smiling Ol Zhou appeared at the same time. Boss, we found something inside this haunted house. Ol Zhou led the way. They opened the door of the last cubicle. The wall was broken down, and behind it was a dim, dark passageway. After moving all the wooden boards that blocked the way away, Chen Gu and his two employees walked into it. This place is connected to the haunted house's basement, it leads to a sealed scenario. With Ol Zhou leading the way, Chen Gu came to a scenario that was completely sealed up using wooden boards. After removing the boards, Chen Gu looked into it. The whole scenario was empty. Most of the props had been removed, leaving behind a desk in the middle of the room. It was a normal desk, nothing special about it. Chen Gu looked inside the drawer and found a diary sitting inside. Is this what you found? Chen Gu took the diary out and flipped through it. He thought that the content looked very familiar. He took out the diary that he had obtained during Nightmare Academy's new student welcoming ceremony. After comparison, the two diaries were about 90% similar. The only difference was that the diary inside the drawer had all of its words sewn on the pages using red threads. It looked rather scary. Boss, this diary is written using blood vessels from behind the door. So, it came from one of the doors. Chapter 755, This Hospital Has Fast Wi-Fi This diary came from behind the door? Chinga knew that Ol Zhou would not say something like that to trick him. He placed both of the diaries that he had found at Nightmare Academy on the table. Boss, I suspect that the success behind Nightmare Academy is because the boss took a lot of inspiration from this diary when he was designing the haunted house. The content of the diary records the scenarios behind the door very clearly, and the boss practically recreated the whole scenario behind the door in real life, Ol Zhou gave his own opinion. Could it be that the boss of the Nightmare Academy has entered the world behind the door? Those who managed to survive a trip to the world behind the door were definitely not normal. We've interacted with the boss of Nightmare Academy already. He is just a normal person with a heart weaker than normal, so I sincerely doubt that he has been to the world behind the door. He probably found this diary by accident. After Ol Zhou gave his analysis, he turned the diary to the last page. The handwriting in this diary is all different, it is written by different individuals, and some of the pages have been torn apart. However, that is not that important. The important thing is that Su Yin and I found this inside the diary. Ol Zhou pointed at the bottom of the diary's last page, where several words were written, I, die, one three, 
school of the afterlife, run. The phrases did not seem connected, and it was hard to tell what the writer was trying to convey. Ol Zhao and Su Yin saw the term school of the afterlife, and they knew that their boss had been trying to find information on this school. When he saw the term school of afterlife, even the glow in Chen Ji's eyes changed. School of the afterlife? Could it be that this diary was taken out of the door at this phantom school? That is highly probable, but I think that we should ask the haunted house's boss in person to find out the truth. Ol Zhou scratched his head. The man is probably still at the hospital. Since he was the last person left inside the haunted house, Su Yin and I decided to play with him for a while. There's no need to worry. The police did brief me a bit about the boss situation. They told me that he is not in mortal danger, so we should get moving to the hospital to find him. School of the Afterlife was the first four-star trial mission given by the Black Phone. The time limit to unlock the mission was almost up, but Chen Gu was not confident that he could complete it. Suin was injured, and Zhang Ya was hibernating. It was very dangerous to commit to a four-star trial mission in his current state. However, Chen Gu was unwilling to give up on this mission. The futuristic theme park was about to open for business, so if he stopped working on his haunted house, the customers that he had gathered over the few months prior would most likely abandon him. This was why he had been researching the school of the afterlife so much. Be it to attempt the trial mission or to abandon it, he would require plenty of information before he came to a decision. You've been here the whole afternoon, did you find anything else? There was another purpose that Chen Gu had asked Ol Zhou and Su Yin to stay back. He wanted them to examine this location. Ol Zhou shook his head. Even though this building is situated at a strong Yin location and shields itself from the sunlight no matter the time of the year, which means that the Yin energy is heavily pulled here, since it is situated on Xi'an High Central Street where people come and go much too often, there are no ghosts or monsters that linger here. It has been built in the middle of a busy city, but it is also a place where lingering spirits can stay for a long time. The location of this haunted house is perfect. The more Chen Gu stayed there, the more he fell in love with it. When I return, I seriously need to talk to Director Luo about this. Chen Gu shoved both of diaries into his backpack. He summoned back Su Yin and Ol Zhou and silently sneaked out of Nightmare Academy. I need to find a way to wake up the boss of Nightmare Academy as soon as possible. Unfortunately, Dr. Wei is busy manning the fort at the haunted house, or else this could easily be solved. When he was at the police station, Chen Gu had overheard the name of the hospital where the haunted house workers had been admitted. After he left the underground parking lot, he hailed a cab to rush to that hospital. This hospital in Xi'an High was huge. There were a lot of patients. Chen Gu walked around for a long time before he found an officer standing on duty outside one of the sick rooms. The actors from Nightmare Academy are inside the sick room? Chen Gu pretended to walk past the sick room, but when he passed the glass window in the door, his pupils narrowed as he used Yin Yang vision. Almost everyone is in there, but how come the boss is nowhere to be seen? Is he still in the emergency room? That's impossible. Ol Zhou and Su Yin are both so kind, so they wouldn't have harmed him so seriously. Chen Gu knew his employees well, and he placed his trust in them. Before arousing the officer's suspicion, Chen Gu went to accost the officer. He asked with a face filled with worry and anxiety, Sir, is my big brother all right? Hearing that breath that was catching in Chen Ji's throat and seeing the worry on Chen Ji's face, even though the officer was confused, he did not turn Chen Gu away. Who is your big brother? He's the boss of Nightmare Academy. I heard that something bad happened to him. How's he doing? You are Shang Guan Qing, Hong's younger brother? The officer tried to calm Chen Gu down. Your brother's condition is not looking so good, he is in deep coma. Following his doctor's suggestion, we transferred him to Jiujiang City to seek better treatment. You've sent him to Jiujiang? The shock on Chen Ji's face could not be hidden, but he reacted very quickly. 
He swiftly added, you refused to let him seek treatment at the biggest hospital in Exion High, but transferred him to a hospital at a small town. Based on my knowledge, the medical standard there is much lower than Exion High. Are you treating my brother's life as some kind of joke? Please calm down. Yes, the overall medical standard of Jiojiang is not as good as Exion High, but in treatment of trauma and coma, they are the experts. You aren't lying to me, are you? You can look it up online if you want. The hospital's name is Jiojiang Central Hospital. They have a care unit that specializes in fainting cases. After obtaining the information that he wanted, Chen Gu excused himself from the officer, and he was ready to leave. Wait a moment. Seeing Chen Ji's back, the officer suddenly felt that this young man looked familiar, he seemed to have met him that afternoon. Without turning around, Chen Gu rushed into the crowd and escaped into the stairwell when the officer was not looking. This officer has such a good memory. I was almost recognized by him. To prevent another encounter with the officer, Chen Gu headed to the second floor. He wished to take a detour around the first floor before leaving, but he only took a few steps, and something caused him to stop. There was someone sitting on the bench outside of a private sickroom, and the man was looking at him with a strange look on his face. Boss, didn't you go to visit a haunted house? Why are you at the hospital? The man who was sitting outside the private sickroom as none other than Zhang Jingzhou. That morning, he had asked Chen Gu for a day off because his father was ill and he wished to return to Exion High to visit him. Since Chen Gu wanted to visit Nightmare Academy, the two had taken the same train to Exion High. Chen Gu did not dawdle on this question for long. He could not possibly tell him that the hospital was actually his third stop because he had taken a detour to the police station before going there. How's your father doing? Chen Gu sat down next to Zhang Jingjiao and glanced through the window into the sick room. He's fine, I. Zhang Jingjiao sighed. Sometimes, I feel so useless. I should have returned earlier to see him. Earlier, we had a very long talk. Even though decades of conflicts could not be resolved just like that, at least both of us have taken that first step. Staring through the window, Zhang Jingjiao looked at the old man in bed who was asleep. When I was young, I saw him as an unreasonable be asterisk starred with a horrible temper. He had meetings to attend every day and disliked coming home. Now that he's fallen, seeing him lying in bed, I suddenly realized that, even for someone as strong as him, they will eventually grow old. Silently turning his head away, Zhang Jingjiao took a deep breath before continuing in his usual tone. I'm sorry, I haven't seen him for so long so. It's okay, I understand. Chen Gu patted Zhang Jingzhou's shoulder lightly, but he did not say anything. He just quietly stayed by his side. After Zhang Jingzhou reached adulthood, he had lived in Zhou alone. Other than the father inside the sick room, he did not have any other family, so Chen Gu was the only other person that he could unload on at that moment. When it was almost 6 p.m., Zhang Jingzhou called a nurse over and handed her a letter. He asked for her help to hand it to his father, and then he left with Chen Gu. Boss, when we were coming down earlier, why did the police officer keep looking at you? Shouldn't you care more about the fact that there is police presence at the hospital? Oh, yeah. Why are there police officers in the hospital? Was there a big case? Perhaps. The two took the last train back to Zhoujiang. Once they left the train station, Chen Gu and Zhang Jingzhou took a cab to go back to western Zhoujiang's new century park. Chen Gu had been away for the whole day, so he was worried that something might have happened at the haunted house. Zhang Jingzhou went along to offer help. After all, he had missed work for the whole day, and when he went to visit his father, Chen Gu had even given him a large sum of money telling him to buy something for his father. To be honest, Zhang Jingjiao was very touched. When they arrived at the park and entered the haunted house, Chen Gu realized that his worry was unnecessary. The operation in the day did not have any problems. Xiao Gu and Su Wan had left work after cleaning the bathroom. Scissors had followed Uncle Su around the theme park to help whenever he could, 
and Uncle Sue had used the opportunity to introduce him to the other workers. This was Uncle Sue's kindness towards Scissors. Scissors did not like to speak and preferred to be alone. Unlike Xiao Gu, if no one guided him, he would probably not interact with the other workers at the theme park for the rest of his life. Uncle Sue, was everything fine this morning? Chen Gu did not expect to see so many workers at the theme park even though it was already so late. They were hurrying with the decoration to prepare for the imminent holiday. Without you around, the place could not have been calmer. It is much better than before. Uncle Sue looked like he was in a good mood. Big fish can only survive in tumultuous weather. We can't be satisfied with a calm environment. Chen Ge had Zhang Jingjiu go and help the workers. He entered the haunted house and returned the specters in his backpack back to their posts. It had been a very interesting outing. It proved that he could go on in the morning to do his own thing without worrying about the haunted house. My workers have already familiarized themselves with the rules, so I can leave this place to them. After walking around all the scenarios and ensuring that everything was fine, Chen Gu summoned the doctors into his comic and left New Century Park again to head to Jiujiang Central Hospital. Slowly opening his eyes, the hospital's white glow landed on his face. Nightmare Academy's boss, Shang Guan Ching Hong, pursed his dry lips, and several seconds later, his consciousness slowly returned. His head felt very heavy, and the world was spinning slightly. He tried to raise his hand and finally managed it after a few attempts. Where am I? He turned his neck with some effort. Shang Guan Ching Hong realized that he was lying on a hospital bed, and two doctors were standing next to him. This is Zhou Jiang Central Hospital's special care unit. You have been unconscious for a whole afternoon. We attempted many methods to resuscitate you, the lead doctor told Shang Guan Ching Hong to stay quick. Take a good rest, we've contacted the police from Xi'an High City. They will probably arrive tomorrow. The police? Why did you contact the police? Shang Guan Ching Hong held his own head. He felt like he had just experienced a particularly realistic nightmare. We do not know the exact details. We are doctors, and our responsibility is merely to help people. Stay here and rest. Based on our previous experience, long-term comas like yours usually include some after-effects, and you'll need some time to get used to it. The doctors explained a little bit more before leaving. Yet, Shang Guan Ching Hong had no idea why he was at Jiujiang Hospital. Boss, did you also go to visit his haunted house? A familiar voice came from the adjacent bed. Shang Guan Ching Hong turned to his side and saw a man with a feminine face looking at him with a bitter smile. Li Chang'in? Why are you here as well? Shang Guan Ching Hong had not expected to find one of his own workers at the hospital. This room is specially designed to treat the visitors from New Century Park. Not only me, everyone here is a victim of that haunted house. Li Chang'in pointed at the other beds, and only then did Shang Guan Ching Hong realize how big the room was. It was a combination of three sick rooms. Shang Guan Ching Hong felt rather embarrassed that his weakness had been exposed to the others, but he soon realized that there was no mocking in these people's eyes. Instead, there was plenty of pity and understanding. What is this sense of camaraderie? With a dry cough, Shang Guan Ching Hong struggled to sit up. All of you fainted in Western Jiujiang's haunted house? The other patients all nodded. Chang'in, you got here earlier than me. Can you give me an introduction? Shang Guan Ching Hong winked at Li Chang'in. The patient in bed one, the one nearest to the window, is Fei Yuliang. He was this unit's first patient. By now, he has almost fully recovered, but do not mention anything related to relationships around him, or he will act up instantly. The uncle in the second bed is an engineer from the futuristic theme park, and he suffers from night terrors. In the third bed, Li Chang'in introduced them one by one, and his voice was laced with pity. It almost caused Shang Guan Ching Hong to shed tears. This whole room was filled with victims, and their experiences kept getting worse and worse. 
All right, that's enough. Shang Guan Ching Hong looked at all the patients in the room, and his fists slowly tightened. After a long time, he finally said, We have undergone the same experience. We are all the victims of that haunted house, so we cannot allow this to go unpunished. Shang Guan Ching Hong was a boss. He had experienced many big events, and he would not surrender so easily. What do you plan to do? The engineer from the futuristic theme park asked. He felt like Shang Guan Ching Hong was different from other patients. I think that we should cooperate together. We are all victims. We can write down our separate experiences and then find some flaws or weakness in them. Shang Guan Ching Hong's eyes slowly narrowed and sharpened. His words attracted the interest of all the patients. Brother, what is your name? Fei Yuliang was the one who had basically recovered. Normally, he looked and acted no different from a normal person. Shang Guan Ching Hong. Even from your name, I know you're meant for great things. Fei Yuliang wanted to say something else, but his eyes suddenly caught sight of the window outside the room. His body shivered involuntarily, and he could barely believe his own eyes. Chapter 756 Two of us left, many unsightly memories flashed through his mind. Fei Yuliang rubbed his eyes, before moving his head away. That should be my imagination. My condition has worsened again. He wouldn't show up here. Before coming here, I had no idea that the haunted house has victimized so many people. I feel so sorry for all of us. Shang Guan Ching Hong then connected the dots. He knew that ghosts had appeared at his haunted house, but he had no idea that it was related to Chen Gu. The confusion in his eyes disappeared. Shang Guan Ching Hong heard the resentment buried in Feng Yuliang's words. When he suggested that they should gang up to ruin Chen Ji's haunted house, he had seen lights shining in his fellow patient's eyes. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Shang Guan Ching Hong knew how to make use of resource to achieve his own goal. Chang In, you should form a group and get everyone to join. After I've recovered, we will start discussing how to deal with that haunted house. Don't get your hopes up. The engineer from the futuristic theme park was someone who had been through many things, and he was not used to getting orders from others. If we could launch a counterattack, we would have done that already, so do you think things are that simple? He scoffed at Shang Guan Ching Hong's suggestion. In the industry, the futuristic theme park was the largest force, and they had done plenty of things openly and in the dark against Chin Ji's haunted house, but they had all failed. Now, a patient who had also fainted promised to succeed where they failed. The engineer thought that it was unrealistic. If you've lost the urge to resist, you are destined to live in the haunted house's shadow, and you will never recover from your illness. Shang Guan Ching Hong was calm. Holding his dizzy head, he wished to sit up because that would make him appear more in control. What do you mean by that? Didn't you faint in the haunted house as well? Have you heard a pot calling the kettle black? The engineer picked up the teacup from the table. When he looked around, he caught sight of Fei Yuliang's body shaking. I am different from you. Even though Shang Guan Ching Hong's face was pale, there was a victorious smile on his face. I did not faint in his haunted house. I fainted in my own haunted house. Your haunted house? The engineer was confused. This was nothing to boast about, so why the pride on the man's face? Yes, I own a haunted house myself, but my haunted house is definitely scarier than Jiu Jiang's haunted house. Shang Guan Ching Hong maintained his mysterious smile. I have a secret weapon, one that is not available at any other haunted houses on the market. What secret weapon? The patients turned to him with curiosity. If I tell you, will it be a secret? Shang Guan Ching Hong was very confident because he had personally experienced that fear before. Shang Guan Ching Hong's acting made Li Chang'in next to him feel something. He whispered to ask, Boss, the thing downstairs has returned? Yes, the thing from before that scared Xiao Tan insane. Boss, are you sure about that? This is not a joke. If that thing really appears in the haunted house, 
not only the visitors, even our workers won't be able to stay inside the haunted house. Desperate times, call for desperate measures. Shang Guan Ching Hong lay in bed. His face was white, and his limbs weak, but he had the confidence of a general who knew that the war ahead was his to be won. What are you two talking about? The engineer looked at Shang Guan Ching Hong. You fainted at your own haunted house, so you have no right to speak at all. I suggest you go and take a spin around New Century Park's haunted house before you come to talk to us about cooperation. I know you won't believe me. Shang Guan Ching Hong nudged his tight neck. Chang In, get me my phone. Open the third video file for him to see. Li Chang In took out the phone and found the video. It was the video that Shang Guan Ching Hong had cut from his haunted house's surveillance cameras. Chen Gu was inside the underground corridor, and suddenly, he saw something scary. His body lost balance, and he jumped from fright. See this? The man that you're afraid of was defeated by me and my haunted house. In terms of fear level, my haunted house and his are not even on the same level. Shang Guan Ching Hong omitted the part where his place was really haunted. This is really the boss from New Century Park. The engineer watched it multiple times to ensure it was not a tempered video. Finally, he believed Shang Guan Ching Hong. He was about to discuss the revenge against Chen Gu when he raised his head and saw that familiar face outside the door. Wait a minute. The engineer's arm was shaking. Before he could put the phone down, he saw the room door being pushed open. Silence fell over the room, and the patients did not dare to even breathe too loudly. I'm not lying to you, am I? Since his body had not recovered, Shang Guan Ching Hong titled his head to look at the engineer. Join the group first. I will slowly teach this B asterisk starred who does not know his limit a lesson. Cough cough. Li Chang In held his lips and started to cough violently. As he did so, he blinked continuously at his boss. Are you okay? I'm sorry to have put you through this, Chang In, but don't you worry, it won't be long before the day you see that man being admitted into this very room. Then, we will have gotten our revenge. Since they were competitors, Shang Guan Ching Hong had been meaning to deal with Chen Gu for a long time. A haunted house in a small town dares to trick people with words and fake videos online. It is time for the man to face the music. Shang Guan Ching Hong realized that no one was reacting to his words. He frowned. Chang In, why do you keep coughing? Should I call the doctor for you? No, no, I think it's time for my meds. Li Chang In turned to the shelves to look for his things, but the shelves were mainly used to store clothes. What about the rest of you? Why aren't you sleeping? Shang Guan Ching Hong turned to Fei Yuliang. Little brother, you were the first one to come here. So, we will start with you. We will go around sharing our experiences and see if we can find any weakness or leverage in your stories. Fei Yuliang, who had initially admired Shang Guan Ching Hong, suddenly acted like he could not hear the man. He leaned next to the window and took out his phone while looking at the moon outside. Mom, I don't think I'll be coming home this new year. Work is very busy. Huh? It's only June. It's nothing, I'm just calling to wish you an early new year. What is going on? Shang Guan Ching Hong felt that something was wrong, and he turned to the engineer. The latter instantly avoided his gaze like he did not know this person at all. He held the phone in his palms and looked at the video with deep interest. This hospital's Wi-Fi sure is fast, there's no lagging at all. These videos published by Western Jiujiang's haunted house are very interesting. Videos? Aren't you holding my phone? Shang Guan Ching Hong soon realized the problem. He turned his neck around as far as he could, and when he did, he almost fainted again. The sick room door was open, and Chen Gu was standing next to his bed holding his backpack. You've awakened already. This is such a waste. I went far and wide to find a professional doctor for you. A warm smile hung on his face. It was as if Chen Gu did not hear what the man had said earlier. When, when did you arrive? 
Shang Guan Ching Hong, became quite a fright. He probably would not dare to sleep on his side ever again. I just arrived. I have some questions for you, and I hope you will answer them honestly. Chen Gu first took out the fake diary from Nightmare Academy and showed it to Shang Guan Ching Hong. Where did you get this diary? I wrote it myself, why? The man was still trying to argue. Then what about this? Chin Gu then took out the diary that he had found in Nightmare Academy's basement. When he saw the blood-like handwriting inside the diary, Shang Guanqing Hong's face turned paler. You don't want to tell me? Chen Gu did not force the man. Instead, he turned to the other patients. I wish to talk to this man alone. Christ, I left my glasses in the bathroom. I need to go get them. The doctor told us to go for more walks. It's good for our health, so I think I'll go for a stroll. Wait, we'll go with you. The patients had been waiting for the queue to leave. With a speed that surprised Chen Gu, they cleared out of the room. Great, now there are only two of us. Chen Gu pulled over a chair and sat down next to Shang Guanqing Hong. Chapter 757 Night before, there are no outsiders now, so there's no reason to worry. Tell me everything you know. Chen Gu placed both diaries before Shang Guanqing Hong. Where did you find this? Shang Guanqing Hong had not recovered from the shock. From what he saw at Nightmare Academy, even though Chen Gu might not have been scarred permanently from his experience, he should have fainted at least. However, the Chin Gu before him was not only very well, he radiated a very dangerous presence around him. Your haunted house is truly haunted, and the origin of all the tragedies began with this diary. Chen Gu pulled open the zipper of his bag. If Shang Guan Ching Hong wished to play dumb any longer, he would summon the few doctors to give the man a thorough examination. After a moment's silence, Shang Guan Ching Hong suddenly laughed. He moved his neck around with difficulty to look at Chen Gu. Even if I tell you now, it is useless because the thing inside this diary has already left. Now, it's nothing more than an empty shell. Empty shell? That only piqued Chen Ji's interest even more. Looks like you know many things. I will not lie to you. I bought this diary from a mother. Her child unfortunately fell into a coma after a car accident. She took care of her child for five whole years, and one midnight, her child suddenly awoke. However, the world around the child seemed to fall into a very deep terror, and he seemed to be living inside a long, long nightmare. Shang Guanqing Hong's words deeply aroused Chen Ji's interest. A coma patient waking up? Where is the child now? Chen Gu did not think that Shang Guanqing Hong was lying. He wished to find the child himself. He's dead now, happened not long after he woke up. Shang Guanqing Hong's voice was strange. It sounded like he had to hesitate before he decided to say the words. During the period when the boy was awake, he kept rambling about strange things, and he was afraid of everyone around him, including his mother. After about two days, the boy finally put his guard down around his mother. He told his mother that he had hidden a diary inside the room and wished that his mother would take good care of it. The mother naturally promised to fulfill her son's wish, but that night, the boy passed away, and the cause of death for the boy was sudden cardiac arrest. The boy passed away after telling his mother the secret? Chin Ga felt that there was something bigger hidden in this story. The mother refused to accept the truth. The boy that she had looked over for five long years finally awakened but left her forever on the midnight of the second day of his resuscitation. She was severely traumatized, and her mental health deteriorated. Even after a long period of treatment, she still had trouble walking out from the trauma. Finally, at the suggestion of her doctor, she sold everything that was related to the boy. This was an effort to act like the boy had never been in her life. Shang Guan Ching Hong knew a surprising amount of the details, he had clearly done his research on the diary. I met the mother and her attending physician at a second-hand market, and it was around then that I made the purchase of this old diary. How is the boy's mother now? What is her current address? 
Is she still in treatment? Chen Ji's brain was already spinning. He could sniff out the unnaturalness surrounding this whole story. Unfortunately, the treatment was not that successful. Selling the items did not mean that she could forget about the past. Due to extreme sadness, the mother eventually collapsed under the mental pressure and left this world one quiet night. Shang Guan Ching Hong tried his best to sit upright. That is all that I know. Then, what about this empty shell that you mentioned? When the diary was first taken back to the haunted house, every night at midnight, there would be the sound of children laughing and crying. This is one of the main reasons that our night tours were so popular and scary at the beginning. But later, the diary suddenly turned back to normal, so I suspect that it is just an empty shell. Shang Guan Ching Hong acted very normal. Chen Gu was not sure whether Shang Guan Ching Hong was lying to him or not, but one thing he was certain. There was indeed no longer any spirit lingering inside the diary, which had been confirmed by Ol Zhou and Su Yin. Everything that I told you is the truth. Shang Guan Ching Hong's voice softened. I know that Jiaojiang is your territory. Since you have the power to transfer me from Xi'an Hai to your territory, I have no choice but to admit defeat. Shang Guan Ching Hong had just woken up from his coma, and he still had not caught up to speed. When he first opened his eyes, he found himself inside a strange sickroom in a hospital of an unfamiliar town, and his nemesis was just outside the door. A normal person would have filled in the blanks, much less someone who was as paranoid as Shang Guan Ching Hong. Thus, naturally, he had come to some misunderstandings. Stay here and recuperate. It was the police who made your transfer, it had nothing to do with me. Chinga felt like there was nothing else to be gained from staying there. He shoved both of the diaries inside his backpack and stood up to leave. The police? Shang Guan Ching Hong was left alone inside the room. He was still trying to digest what Chen Gu had said. Once he stepped through the gate of New Century Park, Chen Gu noticed the difference to the decoration around the park. There were many new things. The holidays are coming. All the workers had left the park, so Chen Gu sat inside the haunted house's staff break room alone. He locked the door from the inside, closed the window, and pulled down the curtain. Then he placed the black phone on his desk. Scrolling down the screen, Chen Gu turned to the page with the mission details. He looked at the words written in blood on the screen. The four-star trial mission school of the afterlife will expire in 27 hours. Warning. After the mission expires, said scenario will be locked forever. After 27 hours, I will not be able to obtain this four-star mission anymore, and school of afterlife will never be unlocked. Chinga raised his head to look at the clock on the wall. In 27 hours, in other words, tomorrow night, the mission will disappear. His finger dangled over the screen, but Chen Gu did not have the confidence to press accept. After experiencing the 3.5 star Liwan city, Chen Gu could only imagine how dangerous and scary four star scenario would be. That kind of terror would be far beyond his current imagination. Zhang Ye is hibernating. No matter how much I call her name, there is not even a single response. Even though Su Yin is now a red specter, the curse on his body hasn't been cleansed, and that seriously dampens his strength. The remaining employees are not good in a fight, so they won't be of much help in dangerous situations. Chin Gu scanned through all the employees in his mind, and he felt a heaviness in his heart. When he went to challenge the 3.5-star scenario, the cooperation of all the haunted house workers barely managed to help him survive the scenario, and now, he was going to challenge a 4-star mission while the best of his employees were damaged and unavailable. So, how was he going to clear this mission? Whenever the timer on the black phone dropped down, the conflict in Chin Ji's heart deepened. His finger floated above the phone. He tried it several times, but in the end, he did not press the accept button. For the sake of security, perhaps I should ask the pen spirit first. Chenga took out the ballpoint pen, covered with cellophane tape, and used the pen spirit's fortune telling power. Pen spirit, pen spirit, will I walk out of the school of afterlife alive? 
Chen Gu was merely referring to the pen spirit for a sense of internal consolation. He did not even dare ask whether he would be able to clear the scenario successfully. Several minutes later, the ballpoint pen that Chen Gu was holding started to move on its own, and it wrote its response on the piece of white paper. If you want to bring me to the school of afterlife, I would choose to kill myself. Compared to going to that place, suicide is a much happier ending. Did you understand the meaning of the word happiness? Plus, is the place really that scary? He frowned while he read the words on the white paper. Chin Gu was surprised by the pen spirit's determination of destroying herself rather than being dragged into this mess with the school of afterlife. My prediction only gives me a vague understanding of the situation, and the feeling I got from that prediction led me to this conclusion. After leaving behind that second passage, the pen spirit did not respond to Chen Gu anymore. If Chen Gu did not know that a normal specter could not leave their object of possession for long, he would probably have believed that the pen spirit had escaped. The pen spirit has a 50% chance of getting her prediction wrong. This is probably the instance where she got it wrong. Chen Gu picked up the black phone and rushed hurriedly down into the underground parking lot. He went to find the crying statue. I have a question to ask you. Standing inside the dim bedroom, before Chen Gu even asked his question, with just the mention of the term school of afterlife, the eyes of the statue started to cry endless tears of blood like it had seen something incredibly scary. The standard of level is too different. Chen Gu had two employees with prediction powers in his haunted house, but they were both normal specters, so they were not that powerful. If the pen spirit can evolve into a red specter, she will become another central core of power at my haunted house. Looking at the broken old ballpoint pen, Chen Gu shared his idea with the pen spirit, but he did not get a reply. Is giving up my only choice? The mission was due to expire the following night. Seeing such an important four-star mission disappear, just like that, Chen Ji's heart was practically bleeding. Actually, there had been instances before when Chen Gu would ask Pen Spirit for her opinion when he had no idea how dangerous a trial mission would be. She would most often say things like there was a 10% chance he would survive or it would be very dangerous, but this was the first time that Chen Gu had seen the Pen Spirit write something like she would rather commit suicide than go on the mission. I mustn't act too recklessly. He repeated that to himself and eventually moved his finger away from the phone screen. He slid the page down further, and Chen Gu chanced upon an ongoing mission, the story of the left oculus. I've only completed the first part of the mission related to Chang'gu, the private viewing theater of the dead. The remaining two parts still have not been completed. Before going to Xi'an Hai, to help Zhang Wenyu fulfill the wishes of the suicide victims, Chen Gu had gone in search of a film crew. He had run into Chang Gu in a total accident and obtained a valuable piece of information from him. Chang Gu's young sister had once been a student at School of the Afterlife, but she had managed to escape. Unfortunately, it was where Chang Gu's sister's soul currently was. Her left eye was now transplanted into Chang Gu's skull, but due to complications during the surgery, Chang Gu's normal eye had been affected, and he was practically blind. Chang Wenyu went inside the School of Afterlife before, and she had a student pass from that school. I should be able to find more information from her. Chin Gu found a new opening, and he decided to deal with this mission first. There are only 20 or so hours left, I must not waste time anymore. Chin Gu packed his backpack. He did not rest for long before leaving the haunted house again. After climbing into the taxi, Chen Gu took out his phone to call Chang Gu's number, but strangely enough, even though he called multiple times, there was no answer. Did something happen to the man? Chapter 758, they staring at the number on his phone, Chen Gu fell into deep contemplation. Chiu Mei, the red specter who can face freely between the real world and the movie world, is still inside the comic. Chang Gu wouldn't have abandoned her and run away, would he? Even though Chen Gu had not spent a long time with Chang Gu, he could sense from the man that he was not the type who was cowardly. A man who was willing to transplant a ghost eye into himself for the sake of saving his little sister, how could someone like that drop his friend and escape on his own? 
Did he run into a problem that he can't resolve, or has my appearance alerted him? He took the cab to Yong Lin Mount Holiday Villa. With his previous experience, Chinga very expertly jumped over the walls into the compound. The clothes that were drying outside last time I was here are still there. The surroundings haven't changed. Did Changu escape the night right after I left? Chinga activated the recorder to summon Su Yin. With Su Yin's accompaniment, he entered the dead's private viewing theater for the second time. The door was left open, and there was a dusty smell in the air. The place appeared ransacked like someone had been there to turn the place upside down before Chingu arrived. There are no footprints on the ground, the stage is free from any dirt, the recordings have been messed with, and all the movies backstage have been deleted. Chin Ji's observation was thorough, he did not miss any details and inspected every inch of theater. Someone has been here since I left yesterday. The other person was looking for something inside theater but probably left with nothing. Chin Gu strode into the broadcasting room. This place has been ransacked as well. This proves that the search hasn't stopped, they probably haven't found what they need. He opened the projector. It needed a password to log in, and only Chang Gu knew this password. If they have captured Chang Gu, then they wouldn't need to ransack the place and mess everything up. Chenga had no idea who had come after him. However, he felt like they had been watching Chang Gu for a long time but had not made their move for some reason. His appearance that night had probably ruined their plan, so they had decided to push their plan forward right after he left. Chang Gu's biggest secret is the left eye that he got from Wenyu, and the left eye was taken out of the school of the afterlife by Chang Wenyu. Is the sudden visit of these people related to the school of the afterlife? To solve this puzzle, the simplest way was to find Chang Gu and ask him in person. Chen Gu opened the comic and released Chiomei. This unique red specter looked around in confusion, just like when she had first been conscripted by Chen Gu. Chang Gu has gone missing. Can you locate him? Chen Ge asked directly. There were only 20 hours or so until the expiration of the mission for School of the Afterlife, so every second was precious. Hearing that Chang Gu had gone missing, Chiomei's expression instantly changed. Strands of blood appeared on her face, and her empty eyes locked onto Chen Gu. Calm down, I'm trying to help you. Before Chiomei could get any closer, Su Yin blocked Chen Gu. Viscous blood dripped to the ground, and the whole theater was covered in this thin layer of blood. Fear and anger mixed together. Chiomei's lips fell over, and a shrill scream escaped from them. Please, don't panic. If my guess is not wrong, your object of possession should be the left eye or the movie recording of the left oculus. No matter which it is, they should be with Chang Gu. Try to sense them, and through that, we should be able to locate Chang Gu. Chinga repeated that many times before Chiomei finally understood him. She closed her eyes, and her body started to fade as the blood vessels withered. This process lasted for a whole minute. When Chiomei opened her eyes again, she dashed out of theater. Quick, follow her. Unable to communicate, Chinga could only use this method to find Changu. Chiomei soon left Yong Ling Mount Holiday Villa. She deserted the road and rushed deeper into the mountain. This lasted a whole hour before Chiomei stopped moving. Before her was a small house that appeared to be used by Forest Ranger. Is Changu hiding here? Chengu knocked on the door lightly and whispered, Changu? This is Chengu, the person who accompanied you to the movies last night. I came back with Chiomei. To prove that he was not lying, Chengu allowed Chiomei to enter first. Moments later, the door opened, and the thin, harried Chang Gu in a shredded shirt appeared at the door. Quick, come in. He was armed with a wooden knife, and there were many wounds on his arms and legs. Those appeared to be cuts from briars and branches when he was running through the forest. Why are you hiding here? Did someone come to the villa after I left? Chen Gu examined the interior of the house. It was furnished with various everyday items and filtered whey. This appeared to be a hideout that Chang Gu had prepared beforehand. He nodded slightly. 
Chang'gu stood at the door, brandishing the knife. He looked very tired, but he did not show any trace of fear. Who were those people? What did they want with you? Chen Gu was more curious about that. In the whole of Jiujiang, no one should be interested in the door other than him. They are victims, too. Chang'gu sighed. The case with my little sister is not an isolated incident, but she is the only one who has recovered. The other children are still unconscious, while others have already perished. The ones in theater are the students' parents? What is going on? The school of the afterlife admitted more than one student, but the only student who managed to survive the ordeal, according to my knowledge, is Wen Yu. So, the parents of the other students wished to get more information about her from me. Chang'gu dragged his tired body back to the chair. They came from a good place, but their methods are wrong. If they follow the route that I'm on, they will only fall down deeper into the abyss. He took a sip of the water on the table. The incidents in my movies are all real. About ten years ago, I noticed the peculiarities surrounding my little sister, there seemed to be a different soul living inside her. That was when I started the investigation, and I realized that she often talked to herself like she was conversing with someone that only she could see. Then, Chang'gu's fists tightened. The soul in her body, to prevent this secret from being leaked, turned to the rest of the family, and at this point, Chang'gu could not push himself forward anymore. Veins popped on his forehead, and he needed some time to calm down. I was lucky to escape, but I didn't dare return to that home. One day, I ran into Chomei in a total accident. After I approached her, I realized that the evil spirit inside Wenyu had found a replacement, and the scariest thing was that the replacements themselves would continue to find other replacements. That eye is like a recurring nightmare. With a shaking voice, Chang'gu paused for a long time before continuing. Chomei was the only exception. Even though she was killed by the replacement and she possessed a deep hatred toward these things, she retained her basic humanity. She was not corrupted by the left eye and resisted the devil's temptation. The recurring nightmare stopped with her, and she lived inside my little sister's body for years. Her kindness planted a seed inside my mind, tried to transfer the left eye from her body to mine and use that eye to find my sister's soul. But the operation failed. Both of my eyes now have problems. Other than the occasional strange visions, I cannot see anything. That is my story. Chapter 759 Last four hours Chang'gu's whole life was a tragedy, but this was because of the appearance of the school of the afterlife. This school not only took his little sister away from him, but also indirectly caused the death of his parents. However, in comparison, the school of the afterlife was merely a mission to Chang'gu. For Chang'gu though, this school was akin to a cage that had entrapped his whole life. He was more desperate than Chen Gu to know the secrets of the school of the afterlife, and that was one of the reasons that Chen Gu had chosen to cooperate with him. After hearing Chang'gu's story, there was still a question in Chen Ji's heart. But what does that have to do with the other parents? Why would they target you? Initially, I had no idea that Wen Yu's incident was an isolated story. Through my investigation in the dark, I paid visits to many families who went through the same experience as me. I asked about their stories and tried to find clues from them. This was to help them and to provide salvation for myself. Unfortunately, I greatly underestimated the complexity of human thought. Human beings can easily abandon their hearts due to hatred and can do anything for the sake of love. They started to refuse to cooperate with my investigation and turned on me. They interrogated me, hoping to find out everything that I know. In fact, some of them tried to gouge out my left eye. Chang Good did not go into the details, but it was definitely not a happy memory, or else he would not have gone into hiding even though he had the protection of a red specter. If I have some residual strength after locating my little sister, then of course, I will not hesitate to help them but in reality, I am now almost blind in both eyes. With this fragile body, I can barely manage to look after myself, I simply do not have the capability to spare any more energy to help them. Chang'gu's voice slowly rose. 
He dared to bet like this, because he was hiding in this old house, deep inside the mountain. What you did wasn't wrong. Chen Go leaned against the door. He still wanted to say something else, but he was cut off by Chang Gu. Actually, there is something that I have been hesitating about. I wish to come to a decision before both of my eyes are completely ruined. Chang Gu turned to face Chen Gu and opened both of his eyes. His right eye was completely white while his left eye looked on the surface to be no different from a normal eye. However, once one looked closer, one would realize that the spot where the pupil was connected to the rest of the eye was covered in clusters of blood vessels. The hesitation has stayed with me for a very long time, but your appearance has given me the determination I needed. I cannot allow this to drag on anymore. This is somehow related to me? Did I trigger something? Chenga had no idea what he did wrong. But I need you to calm down first. We are now partners. No matter what this is, we can sit down and discuss it first. You won't be able to help me with this. How can you know that if you refuse to tell me anything about it? Even if I cannot help you, I have a bunch of friends and buddies. You met them that night. The mention of the incident that night caused Changu's expression to turn green. He was silent for a very long time before he opened his lips once more. Since the eye transplant surgery, the eyesight of my right eye has continued to deteriorate. I cannot see anything out of my left eye, and all it gives me is day after day of torment. I have been suffering it quietly, but one day, the pain became so intense that I was woken from my sleep. In the blurriness of the night, I seemed to catch a glimpse of a door. To allow myself a better look at it, I subconsciously closed my left eye and only looked out from my right eye, but to my surprise, when I closed my left eye, the blurry door completely disappeared. Changu's emotions were raging. He turned to exclaim at Chen Gu. Do you know what that means? That door was only visible out of your left eye? That's right. I saw a door using my sister's eye. When Changu said those things, green veins popped up on his face. The eye protruded, and it looked like it could fall out of the man's face at any moment. It honestly looked quite scary. What does the door that you saw look like? Was it completely blood red with pulsing blood vessels on it? When Changu mentioned the term door, he had Chen Ji's complete focus. Door carried a very special meaning for Chen Gu. Blood red? Changu shook his head. The door that I saw was a very normal door, but when I woke up fully, the door had already disappeared. A very normal door? Did you come across that door again? Chengu had no idea why the door that Changu saw would be different from other blood doors. I did, but every time, it was when I was half asleep. I tried to get close to it, but once I was conscious enough to do that, the door would immediately disappear. Based on what you've said, seeing the door does not seem to have any use. That's what I thought initially, but later, I discovered something very weird. The distance between me and the door was slowly drawing close. It felt like it was trying to draw me into it. Changu's voice took on a creepy undertone. A few months ago, the door was already next to my bedside. Once I woke up from my dream, my left eye would see the door standing next to my bed. I only needed to lift my hand to push on it and possibly enter it. Changu gasped greedily for air. This should be the secret hidden at the deepest part of his heart. I have no idea where the door leads to and know even less about the possible existence living behind the door. I have been afraid, but I don't want to run anymore. Since this door is only visible through the left eye, it is very likely that it leads to the school of the afterlife. Changu's supposition surprised and shocked Chen Gu, but he quickly calmed down. He had entered the world behind the door before, and he had done so more than once. He had seen many doors, and every single one of them was painted blood red. Your analysis is very logical, but I feel like that door might not lead to school of the afterlife. We need to investigate this further. Chenga had not attempted a four-star mission before. He had no idea what the difference between a three-star scenario and a four-star scenario was. 
So, he could not say sure that the door for a four-star scenario would definitely be blood red in color. I don't have much time left. Changu left his finger to point at his left eye. He moved his eyes around. The muscles connected the eye socket and the eye had all atrophied, and only a single dark red thread was holding the two together. Okay, if you insist on trying that, then I won't stand in your way. I only hope that you will fulfill a small favor that I have. Chen Gu himself did not have much time left. There were only twenty hours or so left until the expiry of the four-star scenario. What favor? When you push open the door tonight, I wish to stay by your side to prevent any accidents from occurring. Think about it before you reject me. This is the last thing that I can do for you. Chen Ji's attitude was sincere and his eyes were shining with authenticity. Tonight? Changu was stunned, but he soon agreed. No problem, tonight it is. When Changu gave him the promise, the black phone in Chen Ji's pocket suddenly vibrated. He turned around to take out the phone and click on the new message. Congratulations Spectres favored for obtaining Changu's trust. The third part of the left Oculus mission has been unlocked? Warning. This mission is filled with uncertainty, and it might lead to serious consequences. Please consider it fully before making your choice. Reading the content of the new message, Chen Ji's heart raced. He read the message again and again. This mission detail is so strange. The description of the mission is just question marks, and the warning states that the mission itself will be filled with many uncertainties. The biggest confusion is that it warns me to make a careful choice, but it didn't give me any options to pick. Putting the black phone away, an indescribable worry spread through Chin Ji's heart, and for once, he was feeling apprehensive. Are you all right? You don't look so good. Chang Gu poured a glass of water for Chin Gu. I'm fine, you should get to bed. I will guard beside you. Chin Gu summoned Suin back into the recorder. He pulled over a chair and sat blocking the entrance. Thank you. Changu crawled into bed and pulled on the thin cover. Time moved slowly. Even though two hours had passed, Changu was still wide awake. Perhaps I'm being too nervous. I don't feel sleepy at all. Then again, almost anyone would have trouble falling asleep, being directly stared at by someone else in the room. How about I go back into town to buy some sleeping pills for you? Don't bother. The trip going up and down the mountain will take more than three hours. Furthermore, the pharmacies will be closed at this hour. The thought that he was going to open the door that night caused the drowsiness to abandon Changu immediately. Probably it's because there is a stranger in the room with you. I will go stand guard outside, so you try your best to relax. Chenga stood up, opened the door, and walked out. The insects flitted about in the dark, and Changu tossed and turned, but he was no closer to falling asleep. He kept glancing at the clock, and soon, 2 a.m. arrived. The body is very tired, but I simply cannot fall asleep. This is so strange. This continued until the sun rose, and Changu was still awake. He exited the wooden hut with an embarrassed smile and he realized that Chen Gu had been guarding outside the door throughout the night. I'm so sorry. I have no idea why I cannot fall asleep tonight. It's fine. Chen Gu was not doing so well mentally either. Because he was worried that he might miss the moment that Chang Gu would push open the door, his nerves had been taut. Looks like we will have to wait for the coming night. Chang Gu, try not to fall asleep in the day and I will come back again later, at night. Okay. Changu felt quite guilty for having Chen Gu wait outside his door the whole night. They decided the time that they should meet later that night, and then Chen Gu left with Chiume in tow. It was not that he needed Chiume as a hostage, it was simply that Chen Gu did not know the way back. He trekked through the mountain for 40 minutes, before he finally left Yongling Mountain. He pulled Chome back into the comic and caught a cab to get back to New Century Park. Chengu arrived at Theme Park at around 8.30 a.m. All of his employees had already arrived, and they could not wait to start a new day of work. 
Come, I'll help all of you with your makeup. Chen Gu did not have even a second to rest. After helping his workers with their makeup, Chen Gu went to inspect all of the scenarios one by one. He busied himself until the theme park opened for business. Finally, he thought he could get some rest. However, once he stepped into the staff break room, before he could even touch his bed, he was pulled away by Uncle Su. The theme park was readying up for a busy holiday. Chen Ji's haunted house was the major promotional point, so Director Luo had many things to discuss with him. From the simplest promotional slogan to the channels that they should use to promote the haunted house, and finally, the plan regarding Xi and Hai's haunted house, the discussion between the two lasted the whole morning. Director Luo hoped that Chin Ji's haunted house would open a new scenario to the public in conjunction with the promotion and advertisement. That was exactly what Chin Gu was hoping, but due to the uniqueness of the School of the Afterlife's mission, Chin Gu did not give the promise easily but instead told Director Luo that he would need some more time to think about it. They finally came up with two concrete plans by around lunchtime. One was the projected plan, and the other was a backup plan. After a tense night up in the mountain and then a whole morning of discussing the promotional plan and future direction of the haunted house with Direction Luo, Chen Gu was understandably very tired. He decided to skip lunch because the desire to sleep was far greater than hunger. He rushed back to the staff break room, hoping to take a quick nap, but before he even arrived at the haunted house, he was interrupted by yet another incident. Boss Chen A rather familiar voice appeared behind Chen Gu. He turned back to look, and surprise was plainly written on his face. Chu Chong Lin? This genius mannequin designer who worked at Nightmare Academy had appeared at New Century Park, apparently to meet Chen Gu. After our previous encounter, I asked for your information from my colleagues, and then I went online to look up your story. Chi Changlin's facial expression was hard to read. This caused Chen Gu to be quite worried, he realized that the man was not as easily fooled as he had previously thought. So, what did your colleagues say? In only a few months, you managed to turn a haunted house facing bankrupt into the haunted house with the highest daily visitor count and the highest number of positive reviews online. You have single-handedly created a miracle, undeniably, you are the best haunted house operator that I have ever met. To have my design complimented by you is truly an honor. I am glad and thankful. Everything I said was the truth. Your overall ability is far beyond that of a normal haunted house worker, and you have a genius-like talent when it comes to designing mannequins, you deserve a better stage to show off your talent. Since the man had come to find him, naturally, Chen Gu was not going to let him go so easily. Compared to the information that I found online, you are kinder and more understanding in person. The things that you told me that day, I will forever remember in my heart. You gave me the ability to regain the trust in myself, to push myself further, to wish for a better version of my life. Chu Chang Lin did not see Chen Gu as his enemy. No matter which perspective he viewed him from, Chen Gu had been helping him, and everything that he had said was out of a kind consideration toward him. You came all this way to tell me thank you? The sunlight fell on Chen Ji's face, and his smile was radiating warmth and energy. Chu Chang Lin hesitated for a very long time before uttering the words in his heart. Boss Chen, I wish to interview to work at Haunted House. I wish to learn more things from you. A man will be faced with many decisions in his life, and today, you have made a correct decision that will be instrumental in changing your life. Chen Gu led Chu Chang Lin into the haunted house and handed him the employee's manual. Do I need to memorize everything? You only need to understand the rules. After all, you have years of working experience, and you have the necessary talent, what you lack is a stage for you to shine. Chen Gu led Chu Chang Lin to the entrance to the scenario for Night of the Living Dead. This scenario was on the first floor of the haunted house. It had been abandoned. Since there were more than enough scenarios underground, Chen Gu had allowed it to go unattended. Your task is to redesign this entire scenario. You will be managing everything. I wish to see the limit of your talent. 
Chin Ge and Chu Chong Lin stood at the entrance to the Night of the Living Dead. This scenario was far larger than the toilet that Chu Chong Lin had been responsible for. The environment was also far nicer than a toilet. What? I can't do it. I just arrived here. I don't even know anything, and you wish to hand such a large scenario over to me? Boss Chen, I have no experience dealing with such a large scenario, and this scenario is on the first floor. This is the first scenario that the visitors will encounter when they enter the haunted house. If I fail you, it will leave a negative impression on your visitors, and it might even ruin the reputation you built for your haunted house. Chu Chang Lin was really panicking. Before he arrived, he had run through many possibilities in his mind, but this one was definitely something that he had not imagined would ever happen. It's fine if you don't trust that you are capable. It's enough that I believe in you. Chen Gu patted Chu Changlin's shoulder. Be bold and don't hold back, this is my test for you. Actually, Chen Gu had a very clear plan in his mind. There were too many secrets in his haunted house and certain things were too early to reveal to Chu Chang Lin, so he decided to allow the man to redesign this abandoned scenario. Your expertise is mannequin design. I have the phone number of a mannequin workshop. If you need anything, you can contact him directly. Just tell him that it was me who sent you. The scenarios opened by the black phone were usually empty, and he would need plenty of mannequins to hold them up in the future. He was incapable of coming up with so many mannequins alone. So, he needed a worker to share the burden with, and Chu Chang Lin was just the person that he was looking for. By the way, how much money do you think you will need to redesign a scenario of this size? How much money? Redesigning naturally would cost money. Chu Chang Lin was very cautious. He walked around the scenario for almost half an hour before returning to Chen Go. He opened his lips and uttered cautiously, this scenario originally had a zombie theme. The current props and mannequins are already severely damaged. I wish to update all of them and redo them with a whole new design. At this point, he sneakily lifted his head to steal a glance at Chen Gu. Seeing that Chen Gu had not tutated an impatience or annoyance, he dared himself to continue. I have made a quick calculation in my mind and even the smallest budget will require 3,000 RMB. When he gave this number, Chu Chang Lin was worried that Chen Gu would reject him instantly, so he sneaked another glance at the man. After all, when he was working at Nightmare Academy, he had only asked for 100 to upgrade the mannequin, and the boss had rejected him outright. I am going to give you a budget of 13,000, but you can always come to me to ask for more, Chen Gu said, casually. I only have one request. I need you to do your best and revive this scenario. 13,000? Chu Chang Lin was stunned in disbelief. Actually, Chen Gu also wanted to see what the limit of a normal person was and what the difference the scenario designed by a normal person compared to that unlocked by the black phone was. Chu Chang Lin started to busy himself inside the scenario. He threw himself fully into work. He was completely different from the Chu Chang Lin whom Chen Gu had met at Nightmare Academy. He has the talent and is probably the most professional worker in my haunted house other than Su Yin. However, I cannot place my trust in him fully yet. To become a full member of the haunted house, he has to pass a few more trials. Chen Gu did not wander off that afternoon. He listened to Chu Changlin's design direction and project framework inside the scenario for Night of the Living Dead. He also filled the man in on things that were not listed in the rulebook, hoping that Chu Changlin would mix into his new working environment as soon as possible. At 6 p.m., the haunted house closed for the day. After sending out the last batch of visitors, Chen Gu did not introduce Chu Changlin to his other existing workers, but told him to leave work earlier. After he left, Chen Gu called for a simple meeting. He told his workers some stuff and then told them to go home. He was the only living person left inside the haunted house. He used the broom to clean the toilet. He took a spin around all the scenarios before sitting on the steps outside the haunted house entrance. The sky was darkening, and the theme park was quiet. 
Chenga took out the black phone and fell into a silent thought while staring at the countdown for the mission for School of the Afterlife. There are only four and a half hours left. Chengu was unwilling to give up just like that, but to force himself to attempt the mission, he might not even return alive. He teetered between the two choices until it was about 8 p.m. when he received a call from Chenggu. Chenggu, I am currently at Jiujiang Psychological Illness Treatment Center. I need you to get over here now. Chapter 760, Nightfall's Chenggu sounded incredibly urgent but did not give a reason for that. Before Chenggu could ask for more information, the call had already ended. Why would Chenggu be at a psychological illness recovery institute? Also, isn't he almost completely blind? How did he get there in the first place? Was he kidnapped? Putting the phone away, Chenggu grabbed the backpack that he had packed earlier and slowly stood up. For now, I think I should put the mission regarding the school of the afterlife aside. I will make a decision on what to do after meeting up with Chenggu in person. He left the theme park and hailed a cab to get to Jiujiang Psychological Illness Treatment Center. There were three currently operating mental asylums in Jiujiang, and incidentally, Chenggu had been to all three of them already. After entering the lobby, Chenggu found a deserted corner and summoned Xiaomei out from the comic. Hey! What are you doing over there? Before Chen Gu could communicate with Chiumei, he was spotted by one of the doctors. The visiting time is already over. If you wish to visit someone, please come earlier tomorrow. But I'm not here to visit a patient. Chen Gu slowly turned around while his brain turned quickly trying to come up with an excuse. To Chen Ji's surprise, he managed to recognize the doctor. When he was there in Li Zheng's name to investigate Jian Xiaohu, he had encountered this doctor. Even though he had forgotten the doctor's name, Chen Gu could still remember the doctor's face. Did Inspector Li tell you to come here again? The doctor was also surprised to see that it was Chen Gu. After nodding, Chen Gu added in a soft whisper, I wish to ask about someone from you. Who? His name is Chang Gu. There are no patients here with that name. Then, could he be one of the visitors that came today? He has weak eyesight, and one of his eyes is missing a pupil. If such an easily recognizable person showed up today, the nurses on duty would have talked about it. Wait a minute, I'll go ask them for you. In the break room, when the doctor listed Chang Gu's physical characteristics, it struck a bell with one member of staff immediately. I think they arrived around dusk. They were visiting a patient in a deep coma. They? Yes, other than that blind man, there were two men and a woman with him. I have no idea what their relationship is, but they acted strangely around each other. It felt like they did not know each other at all. Since the doctor was there and Chen Go looked like he was part of the law enforcement, the employee answered truthfully. Where are they now? They left after visiting the patient, but now that you mention it, there was something weird. The employee thought about it before explaining further. The two men and woman returned about half an hour after they left. They asked me if I'd seen the blind man. They seemed to have been separated, and I even helped them look around the grounds for him. Chen Gu had a basic grasp of the situation. Chang Gu had been found by the parents and dragged there for some reason. After visiting this mysterious patient, Chang Gu had made use of the chaos and slipped away. Brother, who was the patient that they visited today? Do you mind showing me this patient as well? This? The employee turned to the doctor with difficulty. After the doctor nodded at him, the employee stood up and said, Okay, I'll take you there. The group walked out of the building and headed toward the quarantine zone at the back of the institute. Chen Gu had visited this kind of quarantine zone before, they were normally used to treat and accommodate highly dangerous and hostile patients. The patient that they visited is Chang Wenyu, she is in a coma. She has been with us for many years now. She does not have much family left, but every month, someone comes to deal with her hospital bills. The employee had a deep impression of Chang Wenyu. Why would you place a coma patient in a quarantine zone? I don't think she'll be able to harm anyone else, will she? 
Chinga asked out of curiosity. Even though she is in a coma and shows no sign of resuscitation so far, those who went too close to this female patient had some strange things happening to them. The employee still wanted to say some more, but the doctor next to him suddenly coughed, interrupting the employee. I have heard of this patient, Chang Wenyu, before. After her physician examined her body, they realized that her mental nerves and nervous system are working perfectly. She does not have the symptoms of a coma patient. Instead, it is more fitting to say that she is in a deep sleep, the doctor explained to Chen Gu. What do you mean by deep sleep? To put it simply, you can understand it as the patient is in a dream that she cannot wake up from. The doctor appeared to be reluctant to continue this topic with Chen Gu, so he walked faster. We're here. This is it. Jiujiang Psychological Illness Treatment Center's quarantine zone was different from the third sick hall's quarantine zone. It was more humane in appearance. There was no sign of wires and walls. There was merely a no-entry sign that hung on the door to pose as a warning. After entering the quarantine zone, Chin Gu felt a conspicuous drop in the surrounding temperature. The temperature inside the building was much lower than outside, and it was much quieter. There were no other sounds, it was as if they were the only living people in the area. As he was led down the corridor, the curiosity in Chin Ji's heart grew. Normally, the more dangerous the patient, the deeper their room would be assigned. Chang Wenyu was merely a coma patient, but her room was in the deepest part of the building. Can I enter the room to take a look? The room door was not locked. Before the doctor even gave him the permission, Chin Gu pushed the door open and entered it. The room was surprisingly big. There were three beds in the room, but only the bed in the middle was occupied. Walking to the bedside, a face that could only be described as uniquely beautiful entered Chin Ji's eyes. The patient's information hanging at the end of the bed showed that the woman was supposed to be almost 30, but the woman lying in bed could easily pass as an 18-year-old girl. Time seemed to have left her untouched. Maturity and sweetness mixed into a deep, scented cocktail or a milk tea with ice. The only flaw was that the woman's left eye was missing, and only a hollow eye socket remained. It ruined the overall beauty of the face. However, in another way, it also made her stand out from the rest. So, she is Chang Wenyu. The patient lying in bed was completely different from the Chang Wenyu in Chin Ji's imagination. He definitely did not imagine a mature woman trapped inside a young woman's body. His gaze moved downward, and Chen Gu noticed that part of the cover was pulled aside. It just so happened to show the detaining straps that were underneath. What are these? Before the doctor could stop him, Chen Gu pulled the cover back. Under the thin cover, specially used by the patients, Chang Wenyu's hands and legs were all strapped to the bed. Why would you do this to a coma patient? Don't tell me you expect her to wake up at any moment. The confusion in Chen Ji's mind continued to grow. He stared right at the doctor, demanding an explanation. Knowing that he was not going to slip out of this one, the doctor sighed and finally admitted the truth. Actually, it is nothing serious. Some of the staff once saw her appear in the corridor when they were on night duty, and they thought that they had run into a ghost. Your staff once saw her walking in the corridor on her own? Yes, and it happened more than once. Yet, curiously enough, that never showed up once on the surveillance footage. And it only happened after midnight. The strangest thing is that whenever we tried to place surveillance on her, she would not move. Only when people were not purposely paying attention to her would this happen. The doctor pushed the employee that was next to him slightly forward. He saw her once before. There was quite a number of male nurses at the hospital, and most of them worked the night shift. Yes, I saw her once. It was near the door of the bathroom. I was washing my hands when I noticed a second reflection in the mirror. She walked past just behind me. At the time, I was scared sh asterisk class. I screamed for help. After I calmed down and rushed out to chase after her, she was already missing. I ran back to this room, and I found her still sleeping soundly in bed. 
The employee shivered involuntarily, remembering that night in his mind. Could it have been a different person? Are you sure the person you saw was her? Chin Gu started to dissect the employee's memory from different perspective. Perhaps it was other mental patients disguising themselves as her, or maybe something else showed up that night. Cough. Cough. The doctor kept coughing. He felt like if he did not stop Chin Gu from speaking, their institute would not have any nurses willing to work the night shift in the future. From our perspective, the most possible reason to explain this situation is sleepwalking, but the unique point about this patient is that she is a coma patient. No one knows what she sees when she is in a deep sleep, or rather, we cannot tell what she is experiencing at the moment, so we cannot apply traditional method to cure her. Our only solution is to detain her like this. Then after you detained her, did any staff on night shift encounter her again? Chinga had a feeling that things were not that simple. However, no matter how hard he pressed, the nurse and doctor maintained the same story. After they strap. Di Chang Wen Yu into the bed, she stopped appearing after midnight. The staff should have corrected their internal version already, and they decided to push everything on to the symptom of sleepwalking. After all, Chang Wen Yu was in deep coma, she could not feel anything and could not resist. In the end, it was naturally the hospital that decided what to do with her. Knowing that he would not get anything more from the staff, Chin Gu prepared to leave. The most urgent mission for him was to find Chang Gu. Just as he was about to place the cover back on the woman, he suddenly caught sight of a hand poking out from underneath the bed. Five fingers poked out from underneath the bed, and the hand appeared to be trying to catch Chin Ji's attention. There was dirt stuck under the fingernails, and there were scratches, caused by tree branches, on the back of the hands. When Chin Gu saw this hand, he was instantly reminded of Chang Gu. The most dangerous place was most often the safest place. The parents who kidnapped Chang Gu would never imagine that he had not actually left the hospital. When a normal person saw a strange hand poking out from underneath a bed, even if they did not yelp in shock, there would at least be a slight shift in their expression but Chen Gu maintained the same calmness throughout. He used his own leg to shield Chang Gu's hand from view. He took one step forward and used the heel of his shoe to kick Chang Gu's hand back under the bed. Gentlemen, I am here today to investigate a homicide, and the situation that you described is very similar to the condition at the crime scene. When he heard the term homicide, the male nurse's face turned pale. He often worked the night shift, and that had probably implanted many scary memories and images in his mind. This doctor should know my relationship with Jiu Jiang's law enforcement. I am not going to talk in circles. Tonight, I wish to stay guard outside this room for a whole night. There is something very important that I need to check. If it was someone else who said something like that, they would be sent packing by the doctor, but Chen Gu was a different case. The doctor often heard about Chen Gu from Li Jing because he was good friends with the latter. It is too dangerous for you to stay in the quarantine zone alone. The doctor shook his head. The doctor is right. Even us nurses on night shift rarely come here at night. The nurse thought that Chen Gu was mad. What kind of person would go to a mental asylum to spend the night there? Something had to be wrong with him. How about this? The doctor gave it some thought, and he turned to whisper to the male nurse next to him. Xiao Zhu, tonight, you will stay back to stay guard in the quarantine zone. Also, give Huang Wei a call. Get him to come report for work as well. Ah? I need to stay back to accompany him? The male nurse could not believe his ears. Make sure you keep a close eye on him. If anything arises where you cannot make the decision, call me immediately. I will be in my office. Doctors at mental asylums actually had a very hard job. Many people might think, would such a doctor have many patients? But once one took a stroll around an established mental asylum, one would realize that the rooms there were always full, and some patients with light cases had to sleep in the corridor. Normally, a single doctor had to deal with multiple cases, so working overtime was considered normal. After the doctor left, Chinga felt much more relieved. 
perhaps because Dr. Gao had left too deep an impression on him when he was dealing with these doctors, psychologists, or psychiatrists, he would be that bit uncomfortable. Do you mind waiting outside? I have some words to speak to this woman. She is in deep coma. No matter what you say, she is not going to hear you, the male nurse, Xiao Zhu, reminded Chen Gu. I know. Chen Gu entered the room and stood next to the bed. Studying the unconscious Chang Wenyu, he said softly, hopefully, you will be able to fall asleep tonight. I will stay guard next to you. If that door appears again tonight, I will try my best to help you. In Xiao Zhu's eyes, Chen Gu was definitely not a normal person. At the thought of spending a night with such a person, his scalp went numb. Chen Gu felt a tug on the edge of his pants. He knew that this was Chang Gu's response. He did not leave the room but went to lie on to the other bed. The left eye was brought out of that school, so it should be able to see the things inside the school. The reason that Chen Gu was helping Chang Gu was very simple. He merely wished to take a look at the school of the afterlife, to gauge how difficult it was. If the danger level was far beyond the level that he could handle, then he would not hesitate to abandon the mission. Chen Gu lowered his head to look at the time on his phone. It was 10 p.m., there were still a full two hours until the expiry of the mission for the school of the afterlife. His eyes staring at the bed where Wen Yu was, Chen Gu trained his focus. Several minutes passed like that, and drowsiness swept at him like waves. He had spent more than 36 hours awake. Holding the phone, the sight before Chen Ji's eyes slowly blurred. It suddenly became very quiet inside the room. Xiao Zhu, who stood at the door, saw Chen Gu lying motionless in one of the beds, but he could not imagine what the man was doing. Such a strange fella. He sat on the bench by the corridor. Leaning against the wall, sleep also caught up to him. 